All right. Good afternoon. Magandang hapon sa lahat. Maayong hapon, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. Thank you for joining me this afternoon for another final coaching session online with Rayo Top Delet Online Academy. I hope you have a great uh, afternoon. A few days from now, you'll be taking the board examination. So I would like you to see yourself in that picture as you can see on the slide. So, so kung makita ninyo ang inyong mukha, sa larawang yan, enjoying the fruit of your labor for the many months that you have been preparing for the board examination. For today's session, we will discuss on social dimensions, one of the subject in professional education. My name is Lesimar L. Esdrilon. I am a licensed professional teacher and I will be your facilitator for the subject. And I am also um, handling a social studies uh, majorship session, which will happen uh, later on. Maraming salamat sa pagsama sa akin ngayong hapon. I believe we have around 75 participants in our Facebook Live. It's good to have all of you uh, today, especially this afternoon session. A few days from now, you'll be taking the board examination. So right before we discuss and rationalize items for today, you can still invite your friends to join us uh, this afternoon. I will be with you for two hours session in social dimensions. Magandang hapon again to all of you, especially that uh, most of our participants to our Facebook Live are coming from different parts, different parts of the country. Meron tayong mga mula sa Luzon, sa Visayas, at sa Mindanao. So let us enjoy and learn from each other uh, this afternoon. All right, so to start, our afternoon, I'd like us to have a goal setting. Uh, madalas kasi nag-uumpisa tayo sa how are you doing, you know, when you're when we're having lessons either face-to-face -face or online. But I'd like us to start with goal setting. So gusto kong simulan ninyo ang inyong araw by looking at what will happen on Sunday, September 26, 2021, the day that you will be taking the licensure examination for teachers. Start with goal setting. So for all of you who are joining me this afternoon, I'd like you to type in, okay, this first thing that I want you to focus on starting at this moment. I need you to write on the chat box, no, doon sa mga nakikisali sa atin sa Facebook Live, write on the chat box, what is your aspirations with regard to your licensure examination for teachers rating? And ba ang inyong pangarap na rating? Now, let's be realistic. We should not aim higher than what we have prepared for, although it will be a blessing if we will be granted, of course. But I need you to be realistic with your dreams. Anything that we are doing in life is not only about mental preparation. It requires us to have physical, emotional, psychological, spiritual, and even financial preparation. So let's be realistic. Alam natin ang passing rate ng PRC ay 75%, but I need you to assess yourself right now and what you would want to have as your rating on Sunday. So dapat alam mo na yung picture ng rating na gusto nyo. So it's good that I am seeing Ma MA or Marel Reyes to Duban. I can see her writing uh, his or her rating as 85%. It's very good. So let us start aspiring for that rating. Dapat as early as now, alam mo na kung anong rating na makukuha mo based on the kind of preparation that you have been doing. Remember, it's not only mental. It's, it starts with believing in yourself. So Gly uh, said it's 80%. How about the others? Ano ba ang gusto niyong rating? Remember, you should not aim for 75%. Why? Because that's just the minimum. And remember, you have been waiting for several months for this actual board examination to happen. And you deserve okay, a congratulations and you deserve to actually end the letter rate or end the board examination flying colors. So some of you, si Barry, sabi niya 89%. Si Omi naman ay 80. Si Mario ay 88. Si Bench ay 80. Okay, that's a very good rating. Okay? In my case, even before I started, okay, even before I started preparing for the board examination, I have already written my rating at a minimum of 85%. Okay, so that's my minimum, 85%. Now, I have to make sure that I know what I want so that the kind of preparation that I will be doing for the succeeding months 
before the board examination will actually motivate me because that is my goal to reach that kind of rating. Some will even write 99%. Wow! Okay? Kung mangarap tayo, huwag naman nating masyadong uh, ilimit ang ating sarili. No matter how high it is, ang mahalaga ay alam natin kung ano ang gusto nating marating. Now, Mario said, paano ba calculation niya, ma'am? Well, remember, in the board examination for your rating, uh, there will be subjects for uh, the, B, uh, the B elementary. We'll have two subjects, that's uh, Gen Ed, uh, General Education, and Prof Ed. So the calculation will be 40% of your letter rating comes from your general education, or 60% is from Prof Ed. While if you're secondary, your rating will be based on 20% Gen Ed, 40% of that rating comes from your Prof Ed, and of course, the remaining 40% will be from your majorship. So yun ang magiging, uh, yun ang magiging distribution ng inyong let rating. So technically, you should know kung ano yung mga subject na dapat inyong pagtuunan ng pansin. Like if you're elementary, it is critical that you have to balance your gen and then prof ed because that's 40, 60. Now, if you're secondary, it is vital that you do good in your gen ed and you have to excel in your prof ed and majorship because both subjects have equal 40%. So, of course, you have already typed in your let rating. That's very good. So, alam nyo na na on Sunday, yun ang makukuha ninyong rating. So, you have to focus on that let rating. Now, since you already have your let rating in mind on Sunday, I need you to claim that blessing. You already know what is your rating. So, of course, that rating is more than the minimum required by the PRC. So let us start with typing your first name, your middle initial, and your last name, comma, LPP. Okay? I need you right now to start typing your name, your first name, your middle initial, and then your last name, comma, LPP. That will tell you that this is my rating and that on Sunday, I will become an LPP. Can you do that for me now? Okay, remember that everything that we have done is to prepare ourselves. And preparing ourselves is not only a mental preparation. It also requires how we view ourselves and how we support ourselves. The best support system that we can have is how we support ourselves. Dapat kiniklaim natin ang blessing na gusto natin. Very good. Mabilis talaga si Marel Reyes Dugduban na nakatay. Sabi niya, Elioma R. Dugduban, Kama LPP. Okay, congratulations. To all of you who are now typing their names, Tama LPP, that will be your name, and your names will be in the list of passers of the licensure examination for teachers this Sunday, September 26, 2021. And maybe some of you or all of you will also become top notchers of the board examination this Sunday. Okay, very good. Dapat ganun ang ating attitude. Dapat alam natin ano ang ating mararating at Siyempre, of course, ito ay makukuha natin. That's why you're joining me this afternoon because you are confident that with this kind of preparation, you can definitely ace and, of course, the ba magiging licensed professional teacher ka. Very good. So congratulations in advance to all of you. O, diba? Dapat ganito ang ating uh, mental, okay? mental preparation. Dapat alam natin itong gusto natin at maaabot natin ito. All right. Now, because you are now licensed professional teachers, and that will be happening on Sunday, September 26, 2021, I'd like us to take a look at some of the reminders that I have prepared for all of you. I have prepared three times or three types of uh, reminders. One is before, followed by during, and then after the examination. You know, importante din naman na alam natin yung mga dapat natin isipin at uh, paghandaan for the board examination. So let's discuss first on the before. Okay, siguro sabi niyo, si Ma'am nag-final coaching tapos meron pa siyang mga introduction. Why? Because this is actually, this, this will set the tone of our uh, discussion. At least magiging comfortable kayo and then magiging relaxed kayo. Kasi I know for some of you, medyo kinakabahan na kasi malapit na yung Sunday. Okay, tomorrow will be Friday and Saturday and Sunday. So, of course, you need to be reminded and we need to support each other. So, these are the things that you have to remember. First is you have to prepare all your documents. Now, when I say prepare, keep in mind that there are many things that you are preparing right now compared to the previous board examination because aside from your notice of admission or your NOAA, 
You still have to bring your ID, your certificate of quarantine, and some of you will be the result of your swab test. Now, I'd like to point out that when you are preparing your documents, this is something I've learned from my husband, you have to keep copies in three forms. Okay? Tatlong uri ng uh, keeping of copies to make sure that you don't lose anything. Okay? Kasi <clears throat> minsan meron mga pag-ingyari talaga na nakakalimutan natin. So you have to keep your documents in three forms. One is in hard copy, the printed one. You can also have a soft copy. Maybe you would like to scan copies of your documents and take pictures of it just to make sure that you have them uh, in handy, whatever happens. Second, you have to sleep. Okay? Do not change your routine because some people normally would sleep late at night. So if you don't, you know, if, if it's not your system or your body clock will dictate you what time you're going to sleep, what I am um, advising is that at least have a good sleep. Okay? something that would keep your body and mind, you know, at rest. Na minsan kasi masyara tayong kinakabahan. That's why I started with this reminder so that on Saturday night, you will be more relaxed, no? Huwag tayong muninervyos din. Uh, remember the day, September 26, is a day of blessing. It's not a day of, uh, it's not a day of problem. You're not taking, uh, you're not there to have a death penalty. You're there because you will have to, uh, enjoy your blessings. So look at September 26. It's the best and the happiest day of your life this year. So, so that you can rest. Next is you breathe. Huwag natin kalimutang huminga. Sabi ni Kyle, three format po. Yes, it would be better, Kyle. In that sense, kasi kahit ano mangyari, mawala man sila. At least you still have copies in hand. Okay? So it would be good if you can keep three copies with you. Three format. Now, merong hard copy, merong so copy at meron din naman yung sa picture lang because everything now is digital. Again, let's go back to the reminders number three. Breathe, huminga ka. Okay? It's, not, uh, it's not a dead end. September 26 is a day of blessing. Hindi ito yung end of your journey. It will be the, the start of your journey towards making all of your dreams into reality. Okay? Number four, surround yourself with positive mindset people. You know, at my age, I've learned to import, I've learned an important thing. One is that you should not listen to people who keep on flattering you. Okay? Huwag tayo masyado makinig dun sa mga tao na walang ibang sinasabi, kundi puro positibo. Another thing is don't focus on people who keep on uh, giving you negative feedback. Yung wala na siyang nasasabi, kundi puro, puro na lang negative tungkol sa'yo. Okay? What you should do is that you surround yourself with people who believe in you and who are honest enough to criticize you. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, yung mga tao na naniniwala na kaya mo, uh, you know, we've been through a lot since 2020, since the pandemic started. So, I think it is important that we surround ourselves with people who are positive and who are optimistic that after all of this, we will be enjoying a much better normal and that we will be, you know, having fun and going back to the new normal with our families and friends and loved ones. So surround yourself with positive mindset people. You eliminate those who keep on saying negative things, okay? Uh, take note that there are only two people who you should listen to. One is yourself, and the next one is God. Makinig ka sa sarili mo, at pakinggan mo rin ang Panginoon mo. In that way, you will be on the right track. And then of course, since I have mentioned about listening to God, the number five reminder is be, be specific with your prayer. Uh, tayong mga tao, lalo na yung mga, you know, even if you're not religious, okay, for most of us, we do believe in an almighty God. Regardless of our religion, meron tayong pinaniwala ang Panginoon. And so I would like you to start praying with specific requests. Okay? Dapat specific. Kasi sa dami ng pangailangan natin, there, there are what we call urgent requests. Yung mga kinakailangan tagal natin or needed talaga natin right there. Okay, so we have to be very specific with our prayer. If I may share, when I was preparing for the board examination, dalawang bagay ang kiniling ko sa Panginoon. One is that, Lord, I need you to show me or I need you to give me all the questions that you know I know the answer. Kasi I, I admit to myself and to God that I am, one, I am not 100% mentally ready. In fact, I am only 50%. Nasa 50% lang ako ng knowledge. Uh, when I uh, took the board examination. And so I asked God, na kung pwede yung, yung buong 50% na alam ko, yun ang lumabas sa board examination. That's my first request. Second, I asked God that if there are questions, the remaining 50% that I don't know, I asked God if he could lead me or give me clue as to the best and the correct answer. Okay, so that's why I was 
more relaxed. Okay, I was more excited and nervous during the actual board, despite the fact or despite knowing that I am not 100% mentally ready. Okay, so you have to be very specific with your prayer. Sasabihin mo sa Panginoon mo, gusto mag-take ng board exam. Hindi, ka, hindi naman klaro sa kanya na ang gusto mo palang ipasaay ang licensure exam for teachers. So be very specific with that. And because of that kind of prayer, after the board examination, isa lang sinabi ko sa Panginoon, Lord, thank you for all the answers during the board examination. Panghuling hiling ko na lang po ito sa inyo, Lord, related to my board examination. Pwede ko bang papasupin niyo ako sa top 10? So you see, the kind of mindset that I have is that I believe that God will provide me the answers to the board exam. And so because He provided me the answers, definitely I will top the board exam. So that kind of mindset would actually dictate the results of your board examination on Sunday. So starting today, be positive and focus on that prayer. Your letter rating that we have started earlier. And then, of course, your name, comma, your LPP. So congratulations. Yung iba nakaka-join lang, ginaya din nila at uh, sinunod din nila ang pagsulat ng kanilang mga pangalan. Now, this was the, or earlier was before. Let's talk about the during the examination. Ano ba ang dapat gawin during the board exam? One is you eat. Kailangan mong kumain. You don't have to have a specific diet. Okay? Uh, you just have to eat, you know, your, the regular food that you've been doing or you've been eating. Ako, in my case, I don't eat breakfast in the morning. And so I only have coffee before the board examination. I eat a little bit during the, the break before the prof ed. So you don't have to change your diet just because you're taking the board examination. But if you believe something or some food would help you, like in my case, sabi kasi ni Kuya Kim, ang saging daw ay nakakatulong to have energy. And because I know that prof ed will happen from 11 in the morning until 2 o'clock, which is normally our shesta and lunch break, I uh, opted to bring banana. Kumain ako ng saging na hinog. Kasi sabi ni Kuya Kim, yung mga unguy daw na ma ma mahilig kumain, they're very energetic throughout the day. So, if, you know, if you read about science, and listen to sabi ng science, merong part ang saging na talaga nakakatulong to give us energy and happiness. So, you know, I have saging and then I also have uh, dark chocolate kasi ang, prof, eh, ang major shift kasi namin is from 3 o'clock in the afternoon until 6.30. So medyo hapon na siya. So medyo nakakadrain na yun ang energy. Okay? So eat food that you like and eat food that would you think would help you. But do not change your diet. Okay? Next is compose yourself. Iba sa inyo masyado nanininervyo so medyo shaky ang hands. Okay? Again, you have to breathe. Pag medyo nararamdaman yun na na medyo kinakabahan ka, you drink water and you breathe. Okay? And then you have to think of something that makes you happy, okay? So that compose mo yung sarili mo. Remember, the board examination is not purely a mental okay, preparation. Your toughness in terms of your physical preparation, even your spiritual preparation will be tested during the actual board examination. Third is you have to read, you understand, and analyze. So before writing anything on any piece of paper or on the answer sheet, please make sure you understand, you read what you are writing, and you understand what is asked, and you analyze what you should be doing. Okay? Baka naman sa sobrang nervous ninyo, eh, hindi nyo na alam kung ano yun yung binabasa, at hindi nyo na rin ginaga, or hindi nyo na rin alam pala na first name pala ang nagsisimula, hindi pala last name. Okay, so compose yourself, read, understand, and analyze. Number four, ask or verify when necessary. There are instances when hindi mo masyado naintindihan or medyo hindi clear sa iyo. So you can raise your hand and ask the proctor for assistance. Again, the PRC expected all of you to be professional. And since you're all professionals, they expected you that you know what you should be doing. So it would be best that if there are instances that you are not sure of anything, raise your hand and ask the proctor for assistance. Number, number five, pay attention to one's own. Okay. You know, tayo mga Pilipino, matulungin tayo. But remember, you cannot give what you don't have. So before acting as a hero, be a hero to yourself first. Alalahanin mo that the future is in your hands. So ha you have to make sure that you are taking care of yourself. Like you have enough number of pencils that you can use. You have your calculator working, okay? You have your ball pen ready, okay? Before you offer anything to others, kasi minsan may mga kasamahan tayong dito take ng board na nakakalimutan yung pencils. So you, ha you have to bring more than the necessary. In my case, I have three pencils. So I only use one. Yung isa, yung na-donate ko, 
uh, sa Berlin sa Simbala and Cebu because I promised Mama Mary that after the board examination, I will donate the pencil uh, that I used during the board examination. And then yung dalawa naman hindi ko ginamit, uh, yun yung willing ko share sa iba kung wala, na yung, wala silang pencil na kalimutan or nasira. And then I, I donated that to the PRC after the board examination. So make sure that you pay attention to your own paper. Okay? Huwag mong sabihan yung katabi mo na umali yung ginagawa mo. Again, you have to pay attention to your own before you act as a hero for other people. You cannot give what you don't have. Okay? So make sure you put that in your... Head. Number six, this is also vital. You have to check your assigned room seat number, uh, booklet, uh, booklets you have received, including the answer. My internet connection. Okay. Let me just go back. Okay. I apologize. Okay. Let me just go back to my PowerPoint. All right. So there, as I have mentioned earlier, you have to check your room, your seat number, your booklet, and your answer sheets. Okay. All right. So that will help you okay, in terms of how you prepare yourself. Medjo, yes, I'm so sorry, Elena uh, Vicencio. Sabi niya, lag po kayo, ma'am. I'm sorry. I think it has something to do with our internet connection. Okay? But anyway, whether we have technical problems, rest assured, I will go back online and then we will continue with our discussion. I hope that you can see me now and that you can still hear me. Okay? I think we have uh, help from anyone. I hope you can still see me and that you can see my presentation. One second. Okay. All right, so let us go back to our discussion. So you have to check your assigned room, your seat number, your booklet, and your answer sheets. Now, pertaining to number six, okay? Pertaining to number six, I would like to remind you that in terms of your booklet, okay? In terms of your booklet, dapat ang booklet na nagagamit ninyo ay uniform. Like if you have received a uh, gen ed, booklet in set A because there are two types of uh, test questionnaires. One is uh, set A and the other one is uh, set B. Okay. Uh, you have to make sure that it is uniform in terms of the type of booklet that you are receiving. Okay. Example, if your gen ed is uh, set A, then it also follows that your prof ed is also set A. Okay, just one second. Let me double check if I am back online. Baka na masyado ako nagsasalita. Okay. I think we're all set. Just give me one second to fix my connection. Okay. Okay, so thank you for patiently waiting. 
I just have to make sure that our connection is fixed. Uh, pasensya na po sa lahat ng nasa Facebook Live. Medyo mahina po ang ating internet connection. Again, rest assured that we will maximize the time given to us and that we will finish everything. So let's just go back to our earlier discussion, uh, our reminders during the actual board examination. Again, you will be, you might be receiving two types of booklet. You will be assigned set A or set B. So keep in mind that if you are, uh, if you receive initially your gen ed as set A, it follows that the remaining uh, prof ed or major shift, if you have one, will also be the same set. So kapag set A and gen ed, set A din dapat ang inyong prof ed at magiging ang inyong major shift kung meron man. Okay, so ganoon dapat ang transition ng inyong marireceive na set booklet. Now, take note that the answer sheets that you will also be uh, receiving should coincide with the subject that you'll be taking. So kapag ka gen ed ang inyong, uh, ang, ang subject na inyong sinasagutan, dapat ang ginagamit nyo rin na answer sheets ay gen ed. So please read uh, the answer sheets or meron nakalagay doon na subject dapat ay klaro doon na gen ed, prof ed, or major ship. And that you will also be asked to write in your answer sheets what set are you taking. So again, if and when hindi pareho ang nareceiving yung sets ng booklet, instead the set A ang, pro, ang inyong prof ed ay set B, please call the proctor and uh, remind the proctor that it has to be uniform. Okay? Moving on, number seven, you double check the items. Okay? Uh, there are instances when students fail the board examination not because they don't know the correct answer, but it has something to do with how they actually shade the items. Okay? So before passing your answer sheets or before doing anything, make sure that you check the items. If you check me about items, meron bang unshaded or meron bang instances na double ang inyong na shade na items? Kasi the ones that will be checking your answer sheet is a machine. And it follows a pattern in how it check. So dapat ay, kasi hindi naman tao yun eh. So machine yun. So meron siyang pattern na sinusunod. So please follow the correct pattern. Which also coincides to number eight. Take your time in answering the questions. Now, in my experience as a lecturer since 2014, I noticed that many of the students who are answering questions, you know, lalo na kapag mga pre-test or post-test or even pre-board, napakabilis nilang matapos. Okay, there's, there's a rationale behind why you are given the time to answer questions. For example, in Gen Ed, you are given two hours to answer questions, followed, of course, by Prof Ed for three hours. And if you have a major ship, you are given three hours and a half to answer questions. Ibig sabihin, binigyan ka ng tamang oras, okay? Tamang oras at sapat na oras para sagutin ang mga tanong sa board examination. So you should be able to utilize and maximize the time given to you. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, mga teachers, hindi naman pabilisan ang pagsagot sa board exam. Hindi naman sinabi ng PRC na kapag ka ikaw ang naunang matapos ay meron kang plus 5 or plus 10 or plus 15. So dapat ay ginagamit mo ng tama ang oras. Let's say for example, Prof. Ed, because for elementary that is 60% and for the secondary that is 40%. That is 150 item question per Prof. Ed. So you are given three hours. Ibig sabihin, at least you are able to maximize one hour for every 50 questions. Kung gen ed naman, dalawang oras ang binigay sa inyo for 150 items. And for the major ship, three and a half hours for 150 items. You are given enough time. So please take your time in answering the questions. Okay? Uh, dapat ay inuuna yung sagutan yung pinakamadali o yung mga items na 100% sure ka na yun ang tamang sagot. And then you go back or you put asterisk on questions that you are not sure of and then go back to those items after you are done with the easy questions. That way you are sure, you are assured that all of your answers are correct and that you are leading yourself towards your desired rating. And more importantly, yung dream natin na maging top notch sa board examination. Okay? Number nine, be positive and have fun answering questions. Now again, on board exam, hindi naman siya purely para kang nasa dead end. You should enjoy and have fun. Okay, answering questions. There are questions that may be out of this world. Hindi mo nabasa, hindi mo alam, hindi mo narinig kailanman. So instead of feeling down and discouraged because there are many items that you do not remember and you don't know, you have to remember that the board exam is a multiple choice questions. So kahit anong mangyari ay mayroon kang sagot. That's A, B, C, D. Meron kang choices that to choose from. 
So, you have to have fun while answering. There are three important things that dapat mong gamitin sa board exam. Number one is knowledge. Ang knowledge ang basic or foundation ng lahat. Unfortunately, this is also the very first na nakakalimutan natin. Madalas natin nakakalimutan yung knowledge natin eh. And then, is it normal? Yes, it is. Minsan kung kaya natin kailangan ng knowledge, doon natin siya nakakalimutan. Kaya nga minsan madalas nagkaka-amiss siya ang mga estudyante, lalo na kapag ka ito ay examination. You should not feel bad for forgetting things. Instead, you should embrace the possibility that yes, you might forget some things, but that is not the end of your journey. Okay? Kung meron mga mga bagay na nakalimutan ka, then you go and then you use your common sense. What is common sense? Sentido common in Spanish. That is your ability to read clues. Okay? Dapat maghanap ka ng clue, ng tamang sagot. And then dapat iniisip mo rin, ano pang purpose ng tanong na ito? At kung ito ang purpose ng tanong, then ano kaya ang tamang sagot? Okay? So you have to practice also using your common sense during the board examination. Unfortunately, ang common sense, din man siya common sa lahat. So marami sa atin sense na lang. Okay? So kung wala kang knowledge, nakalimutan mo rin yung common sense mo. So ano na mangyayari sa iyo? Then you have to use your instinct. Ano ba yung instinct? Ang instinct kasi gut feel. And according to science and psychology, women have higher instinct than men. That's why yung mga babae or tayong mga babae, advanced tayong mag-isip, no? But remember, instinct is also something you can use. And if you know how to listen to your instinct, um, it will actually lead you to the correct answer. So, you know, ju you just enjoy the process of uh, finding the best and the correct answer by using your knowledge, your common sense, and your instinct. All right? So, let us continue. Okay. So, apart from the reminders during your, you know, during your uh, board examination, let's go to the reminders after the board examination. Ano ba ang dapat ginagawa okay, after the examination? All right, you breathe. Okay? Huminga ka. Tapos na ang board examination. There's no point na pagdudahan mong sarili mo. There's no point na you feel sad and discouraged. You have done your part and that you deserve to enjoy. Okay? Number two, have that sense of gratitude. Uh, minsan tayong tao hindi tayo contento sa maraming mga bagay. And, uh, you know, it's true for majority of us. But, you know, with the things that's been happening since 2020 and the pandemic, we should be grateful for all the blessings that we have received, including the opportunity, you know, to have, to, to live and to be alive and to enjoy our gift of life. And that you should be thankful that you have been given the opportunity to mark history as the first takers of the board examination in left during the pandemic. And the moment you pass and the moment uh, you top the board, you will cement your name in history. Dapat yun yung look forward mo na, oh my God, magiging kasaysayan ang aking pangalan. Imagine, in the pandemic or during the pandemic, I become a licensed professional teacher and then I also become a board top notcher. So imagine the kind of motivation and the kind of inspiration that your story will give to a lot of people. Okay, so dapat grateful ka sa opportunity that you have been given if you are able to take the board examination. Number three, smile and congratulate yourself and the people around you. Okay, dapat maging masaya ka tapos ng board exam and then magiging licensed teacher ka na. Remember what we have done earlier? You type in your rating and then you type in your name with the title LPP. So, dapat you should congratulate yourself. Okay? Which also means that in number four, when I say having a positive mindset, you should not compare your answers. Uh, there are students who write after taking the board examination, madala sila ay nagtatanungan, ano yung sagot mo? Set A ka ba? Set A din ako? Ano sagot mo sa ganito? There's no point of you comparing your answers to your friends. Okay, and the people around you, because with all honesty, nobody knows the correct answer except the board of examiners and the machine. Okay, so there's no point comparing your answers. All right, remember you have claimed your blessings. You said this is your rating, and you said you will become an LPT. So comparing the answers will not undo what you have done during the board examination. It will not change your rating, more or less. It will not change your future. Okay, so stop comparing your answers. What you should do, 
right after the board examination is that you embrace opportunities while waiting for the results. So instead of asking or comparing answers, you should say congratulations to each other for making it through the board examination and for becoming LPT of September 26, 2021. Now, while waiting for the exact day for the results to come out, embrace opportunities. When I say embrace opportunities, you know, you try to enroll in other courses to improve your skills and also to make sure that you are skills ready when after the results come out and then you are asked to apply for any private school or apply for the public school. Okay, and then of course, number six, enjoy the rest of your day. You deserve to enjoy, okay, the whole of Sundays and the whole days after the board examination. Take note, you are done with the board examination. So there's no point for you to feel sad. You should be happy, okay? So dapat pag mo sa bahay, you thank your parents, your loved ones, your friends. Thank, thank all of them for supporting you and your dreams. And then congratulate yourself, your friends, of course, your parents and your family who have been there supporting your dream. Okay, so stick to that. Okay, iwasan na natin ang mga iba't ibang bagay na negatibo. Okay, so that sets the tone of our pre, okay, pre final coaching, uh, pre final coaching activities. Let's go to the more serious uh, type, okay, serious type. Let's discuss now the TOS of your social dimensions. Now, social dimensions is interrelated with the teaching profession. So these are the topics that you will be asked under the subject. You will be asked to interpret situations pertaining to the teacher's personal uh, development and professional development, the role of the teacher in the local and global community. You also be asked in the different types of dimensions related to the school, such as history, economic, social, cultural, geographical, environmental, political, and even psychological factors. You will also have questions relating to philosophies and legal foundations. That's why some of the questions and your social dimensions and prof ed will be more or less aligned to your SOC side and gen ed. So legal foundations pertaining to laws and philosophies. You will also be asked about pillars of learning. So you have your to know, your to be, your to do, your learning to live together, and then your learning to transform. And then a little bit about code of ethics. And then finally, about the professional teacher's accountability. So under social dimensions, and of course, prof ed in general, you will have situational questions relating to our role as a licensed professional teacher. So these are the coverage of your social dimensions, all right? So now let's take a look at the setting of expectations. What are we going to do for the next, or to complete the two hour session? Uh, most of the items, that I will be rationalizing this afternoon are taken from your pre-board, okay? Although there, there are some that I have edited, but uh, in general, uh, they are your rationalization or they are your pre-board items that you have uh, took, I think last week. So I'll be rationalizing 30 items. Now, since we have limited time, uh, take note that in my presentation, I also added an explanation uh, after the question. So what we are going to do is that after I post the questions, okay, as you can see on the slides, I need you to type in your answers in the comment section. Okay, so doon ninyo, okay, doon ninyo isusulat sa inyong uh, comment section ang ating sagot. Okay, so you will have choices from A, B, C, and D. So you choose Okay, from the choices, I'll give you around 10 to 15 seconds, uh, maybe, so that you can start uh, typing your answers. Uh, but I will read the questions twice so that I can uh, also help you. Kasi kumahina kasi ang ating signal. Minsan, you know, late yung nakakita yung nasa screen. So at least when I read the questions, uh, the audio, okay, would help you, okay? And in terms of uh, understanding. So again, you read the question, okay, and then 10 to 15 seconds, you write your answers, choices from A to D. Um, I will also help you in terms of uh, interpreting questions later on. So I will give you tips, okay? I will give you tips on how you should actually, or how you would, or you should understand the questions. Like, ano ba ang multiple response? Ano bang ibig sabihin kapag ganito ang tanong sa left? Okay, are we all set now? Okay, medyo mahina. Hindi ko makita ang Facebook Live. Okay, just give me one second para ma-access ko yung ating Facebook Live. 
para kahit pa paano okay, makikita ko kayo doon so there okay, there thank you so much everyone okay, for uh, bearing with me okay marami na kayo nagko-comment doon we have 145 people okay uh, joining me this after joining us this afternoon all right we're all set so let's get it on okay <laughs> let's get it on and let us try to answer 30 item questions under social dimensions starting with this question number one according to prc revised guidelines for continuing professional development every professional teacher is required proof of blank continuing professional development units for a new one a professional identification card every three years. Your choices are the following A15, B45, letter C30, D48. Again, according to the PRC revised guidelines on the CPD, every professional teacher is required proof of blank continuing professional development units for a new one, a professional identification card every three years. Is that A15, B45, letter C30, D48? Your 10 seconds starts now. You can start typing your answers. Tioni is the first to type in. Answer said B, C, and naman a letter A, B, ang iba, B, e A, B, A, B, okay. Okay, somebody says letter C. Celia Marie, sabi niya letter C. Okay, majority of you answered letter B, so we will be answered letter A. Okay, so let us try to interpret the question. Now, if you look at the question, number one, it says resolution number 2013-774. Okay, now, um, I did not read. If you notice how I read the question, I did not actually read resolution number 2013-774. Okay. This is, an, this is a recycled question. This is a recycled question from the previous board examination. However, if you notice me reading the question, I did not cite the resolution number. Why? There is a reason why I did not cite the resolution number. All right, let us explain. Now, the CPD law is uh, according, or the CPD units that uh, we are required from the PRC is because of RA10912, which is the CPD law or the Continued Professional Development Law. This applies to all professionals under the PRC. Now, in the past, okay, if you look at the explanation on the slides, in the past, the original memorandum issued by the PRC in terms of its IRR or the implementing regards and uh, regulation uh, actually provided that the number of units required for teachers to renew their license is 45 units. But going back to the question, I did not read the resolution number 2013. Now, if you would ask me why I did not read, because I am anticipating that when you will be taking the board examination on Sunday, if this is the same question that you will be asked, it is no longer the 2013 resolution but we will be adopting the 2019 resolution, which is on February 7, PRC issued resolution number 2019, that's 1146, that outlines the IAR of the CPD law, which provides that from the original 45 units in 2013, okay, 2013 resolution, from the original, it is now down to 15 units every three years, okay? So, there are two ways that you will answer question number one. If the question, it still would provide you 2013-774, which is the original question that I have listed in the slides, you will answer letter B, 45 units. But since I did not read the resolution, assuming that they will be adopting, because that is now our new guidelines, the new guidelines under the CPD law for teachers with the issuance of the new PRC IRR provides that the new number of CPD units per teacher is from 45 units. It's now down to 50 units every three years. Nakuha. Again, ha? Uulitin ko doon sa mga hindi masyadong uh, naintindihan o yung iba na medyo choppy ang linya. Dalawang bagay ang pwede mong isagot sa tanong na ito. 
kung mananatili ang resolution number 2013-774, we will stick to the original number of CPD units, which is letter B, boy 45. However, kung tatanggalin nila yung resolution number 2013-774, then we will assume that the question will now be relative to the new guidelines, which is the 15 units. That's why I did not read the resolution number. If you have been listening to how I read the question, hindi ko siya binasa kasi we are anticipating the new resolution. Okay? So there are two ways to answer that question depending on what resolution. Ko original siya na resolution 2013, that's letter B, boy 45. But if there is no resolution number, we will assume that this is the new guideline. So the correct answer is letter A alpha 15 units. Okay? So let's proceed. That's why I said letter A 15 ang tamang sagot. Okay? Let's move on to question number two. Okay. As a teacher, we do have an important role to play in peace education. How can we contribute to genuine peace education? All right, then this is a multiple response questions. Multiple response, meaning that you will be provided statements from number one to number four, and then you will have to find the best answer. Number one, by creating a learning environment where both teachers and students teach and learn from one another. Number two, by combining lessons with practical application. Number three, by analyzing issues in a holistic way. And number four, by promoting values such as compassion, equality, <clears throat> interdependence, diversity, sustainability, and nonviolence. Excuse me. So your choices are the following. Letter A, one, two, three, and four. Letter B, one, two, three. Letter C, one, and two. Letter D, one only. All right. So while you are reading the answer to the question, I'd like to point out this is a multiple response. So for multiple response questions, keep in mind, if it's a positive question, you go for positive answers. If the question is negative, then surely it will have a negative answer. Okay, type in your answers in the chat box. You are given 10 seconds to answer. Okay, so win, si Paula, si Lizel, si Shirley, si Jovi, si Rizame, si Giselle, si Lila, Si Prince, si Amy, si Leia May, si Irene, si Darwin, si Sheila, si Hanelin, si Eleanor, uh, si Cherry May, si Dioni, at si Eileen, including Rika May and Normida, followed by uh, the Duban. We have Carol. Okay, very good. So we all agree that the correct answer to this question is letter A alpha, one, two, three, and four. Of course, the, from uh, responses one, two, and four, we cannot find any negative statements. If you look at peace education, how we process that in the classroom is by using knowledge or targeting knowledge, attitudes, and skills. Sorry. And then, of course, this is a multicultural approach to teaching. Okay. So, technically, all of you are correct. Congratulations. Let's move on to question number three now. This is quite long. Okay. So, these are the choices. Okay. Janet in her report to UNESCO, learning the treasure within strongly recommended that all education reform be conducted in the spirit and essence of sustainable development and called for the full-fledged pursuit of reorienting education to attain sustainability. Considering his or her influence on learners, which is the most fitting and significant response from a professional teacher. So the line most fitting and significant will significant response will tell you that the choices are all correct. Okay, kapag ka ang tanong ay most, okay, the best, okay, it will give you an idea that all choices are correct, but you will have a job to look for the best and the most accurate. Okay, so A integrate concepts, B create a separate subject. Let us see make ESD a thesis or dissertation, letter D serve as lecture. Okay, your 10 seconds is given, type in your answers. I think si Giselle, si Gazelle, okay, yung iba, I think na Ajiba, I think, um, balik ka diyata ito. Elena, Jane, Carol, Diosa, Yumi, Paula, Darwin, okay. You see, you can actually get the correct answer immediately. So, if you look at the questions, the PRC gives you 60%, easy questions, 30%, moderate, and 10% difficult. So, you know, based on the calculation, if it's 60% easy, then definitely all of you pass, will pass the board examination. But what will separate your scores is how you will apply all the knowledge, the common sense, and instinct that you have. Okay, very good. 
Of course, the correct answer is letter A, integrate concepts, because that is the most complete and the most comprehensive answer. Okay, very good. Okay, that's the correct answer. So education for sustainable development is our new mantra of teaching right now. This is a lifelong process that will take care of the cognitive, the social, emotional, and behavioral dimensions of learning, including transforming our students to become global learners. Okay, let's move on now to question number four. What is the main objective of the Educational Service Contracting Scheme, or ESC? Letter A, to be congest. Letter B, to enter a contract. Letter C, to fill up the private schools. Letter D, to enter into an agreement with parents. Again, main objective. The question is the main objective, so we are looking for the primary. Sa Tagalog, ito ang pinakamahalaga or pinakauna. Okay, nalayunin ng Educational Service Contracting Scheme or ESC. Okay, I think I have seen Eduardo typing in his answer. Okay, Chris Tanyeza. Win in Dong. Okay, Wesley. Mike. Okay, si Win, si Mike Kimate pala yun. Elena, Wendelin, Sherlyn, o oh, di ba? Bigilis niyo yung sumagot. Okay, so at least comfortable kayo in answering. Meron na tayong 218 okay, participants in, the, in our Facebook Live. Okay, marami na nito type. Si Anne. Tingnan natin. All right. So we all agree that there's only one answer and uh, there's only one possible answer about the educational service contracting scheme. So just to... Remind all of you, the ESC is a partnership program by the Department of Education and uh, public, uh, the private schools. This is based on the provisions of Article 14 of the 1987 Constitution and, uh, of course, our Republic Act on the expanded uh, government assistance students, uh, assistance to students and teachers in private education, or GASP, which is the legal basis of the Educational Service Contracting Scheme. So ang gagawin ay is to contract private schools so that they can help in decongesting okay, the public schools. Okay, very good. So the correct answer is letter A. Diba? Kung ngayon ang board examination, tama kay lahat sa number four. Let's continue on question number five, another multiple response question. With which kind or kinds of interaction is the goal of global, okay, or... Uh, what we call international education, where Filipino teachers play a part. Number one, thinking, perceiving, communicating, and behaving in new and different ways with people from many different backgrounds. Two, expecting people to think, perceive, communicate, and behave in the same way that Filipinos do. Number three, making people adopt Filipino beliefs and practices, as these are highly positive. Your choices are letter A, one only, letter B, two only, letter C, three only. And letter D, one, two, and three. Okay, again, the question is with which kind or kinds of interaction? Now, if it's an or, then you have to look at the choices. If it's a multiple response question, take note that we are looking for, or we are interpreting the question based, or we are actually looking for an answer based on the question. So if it is a positive question, it requires you to also choose a positive answer. Some of you answers letter D. Okay, others answers letter A. Merong letter C, letter D, letter A. So ngayon naman sa number five, dito magkakatalo kasi iba-iba ang inyong sagot. Okay. Uh, some of you answered letter D, which means that we have to uh, consider number one, number two, and number three. Again, what I mentioned earlier is that kapag kapositibo ang tanong, dapat din ay positibo ang sagot. So let us try to examine. Number one, thinking, perceiving, communicating, and behaving in new and different ways with people from many different backgrounds. Is that positive? Yes, of course, it is positive. How about number two, expecting people to think, perceive, communicate, and behave in the same way that Filipinos do. If you look at the statement number two, expecting people to think, okay? You know, just apply it sa pag-ibig. Remember, okay? Kapag meron tayong expectations na hindi, you know, na meet, there are instances that we get discouraged. And if you think about how we think, how we perceive, and how we communicate, these are dictated by cultural perspective. 
meron itong halong influensya ng kultura. So kapag ka ang pinag-uusapan ay kultura, magkakaiba din ang ating pananaw tungkol sa kultura. Which means that we do not expect people to think the way Filipinos do. Because we interact with different kinds of people. There's what we call diversity. Right? We do not only interact with Filipinos like us, we also interact with foreigners. And so we do not expect them to think, perceive, and communicate like we do. Because again, we are inclusive. So we welcome everyone. That is why there is what we call constant adjustment. So napaka-negatibo ng expecting people. Kasi sinasabi mo, you expect people. So parang hindi mo sila katanggapin na kapag hindi mo ako tinanggap na Pinoy ako at hindi ka nag-adjust sa akin, goodbye na tayo. Okay? So that's yung marami mga relasyon na sisira dahil hindi tayo marunong mag-adjust sa isa't isa. Okay? Masyado tayong nahihilo doon sa paniniwala natin ng mga expectations na dahil nung naligaw ka, red, 12 red roses ang ibibigay mo, dapat everyday din. Pat pa nag-aaway tayo, lagi merong uh, labing dalawang rosas. So, parang kung may mga araw na wala siyang pera. Okay? So that somehow is not actually an entire good statement. Number three, making people adopt Filipino beliefs and practices as these are highly positive. Again, this is a negative connotation, making people adopt. So when you say making people adopt, there are two ways to interpret the statement. When you say you adopt them to making people adapt, pwede siyang pipilitin mo sila mag-adapt. Again, it's a choice of the person. Sabi ni Ellen Norman, hugot si Mabara. Hindi na ba? Okay. Nagiging realistic lang tayo para mas maging madali nating maintindihan ang mga bagay-bagay. So if you look at again the question, the question is positive. It requires us a positive answer. So the only statement that is purely positive in all ways is letter A, one only. So ang tamang sagot sa number five, ladies and gentlemen, is one only. Again, global education is about cultural diversity. So kung merong diverse, iba-iba, sa so dapat ay meron tayong constant adjustment and respect. Okay? So again, hindi letter D, hindi rin letter C, kundi one only. Okay. Let's continue on question number six. Okay, this is another multiple response questions. The question is, which is our way or ways by which schools can be learner-centered according to the provisions of RA 10533? Going back to my reminder, kapag ka-positibo ang tanong, dapat ay positibo rin ang sagot. Number one, using mother tongue as language. Number two, by making the curriculum flexible. Number three, by indigenizing the curriculum. Your choices are A, one only. B1, 2, 1, and 3, letter C, 1, and 2, and letter D, 1, 2, and 3. Right? So, can you type in your answers? Lak, sabi ni Paula, kasi ako sa bawat hugot mo, Ma'am Rara. O, di ba, nakarelate ka, Paula. O, sabi ni Johnny, nawawala, wala ang signal. Johnny, pasensya ka na talaga, no? Nayo ay nandito sa uh, iba't ibang lugar sa Pilipinas. Si Wen ay letter D. Iba naman sa inyo ay letter C. Okay, one and two. Okay, so, well, you are divided. Uh, in choosing between letter C and letter D, so ibig sabihin, we can agree that we will eliminate letter A and letter B. So, ang titignan natin ay one and two, at ang sagot ninyo na letter D, one, two, and three. Now, let us examine. Kasi yung iba, letter C, one and two, ayaw ninyo sa number three by indigenizing the curriculum. So ano ba ang ibig sabihin ng indigenizing, ladies and gentlemen? Now, according, okay, according to 10533, ano ba ang 10533? That is actually your um, enhancing the Philippine Basic Education Act of 2013. Okay? Now, this is what you call your K-12 law. However, sa K-12 law, ang sinasabi dito ay meron tayong tinatawag na under Section 5 Curriculum Development. Under Section 5 of the Curriculum Development of RA10533, meron siyang mga tinatawag doon na paano ba natin ginagamit o ini-implement ang curriculum development. Ang curriculum development, ang sabi dito sa Section 5, ay gagamit tayo ng mother tongue. Okay, that's why we have the multilingual and mother tongue, MTBMLE, in the elementary. Meron din tayong making the curriculum flexible and responsive. This is what we call localizing our content and our uh, contextualizing the content and the delivery of our instruction. Ibig sabihin ito, i-adjust natin ang ating instruction according to the needs and interests of our students based sa ating locality. And of course, 
the last requirement is indigenizing. Ang indigenizing kasi, pareho yan ang termino na localization. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, tama si indigenization. Ang indigenizing kasi, ito yung pinatawag nating localization of our content, localizing our curriculum, depende sa pangangailangan ng ating uh, ng kultura at maging ng ating uh, lokalidad, kung saan tayo nagtuturo. Uh, for example, with the adoption of the, you know, the IPRA, the Indigenous Peoples' Rights Act, it also provided DepEd the opportunity to actually offer an indigenous or what we call the IP, Indigenous Peoples' Curriculum, to the areas where there are indigenous uh, students. Yung mga miyembro ng ating mga kapatid din sa tribo, o yung mga indigenous people, meron din tayong tinatawag na IP school or IP curriculum kung saan ang sinusunod natin ay according to the culture of the locality. So that is what we meant by indigenizing. Hindi siya negatibo, hindi positibo siya. Indigenizing, ibig sabihin, we localize the content, we localize our instruction according to the needs and according to the interests of our learners. That is why si DepEd ngayon, meron na siyang IT school. Merong mga eskwelahan, like dito sa Mindanao, kasi taga Mindanao ako, merong mga IT school na itinayo ang DepEd kung saan ang mga teachers ay sumusunod sa tinatawag nating IP curriculum. This is to promote the rights of the indigenous community and at the same time, also to respond to the local needs of the community. Okay, so ang tamang sagot ay letter D, Delta. Okay, one, two, and three. Okay, let's move on to question number seven. Now, this is a negative question. So how you process this question is to look for a negative answer. The question is, which is not true about globalization, hindi totoo. It affects all countries. It seeks to explain the integration. It is one of the most dominant forces. As advanced by the ASEAN heads of state, it has three distinct pillars, economic, social, cultural, and political. All right, your 10 seconds is given. You are now given 10 seconds to answer this question. Okay, sabi ni Eleanor. Ah, okay, ma'am. Yes, Eleanor, thank you for listening and responding to the explanation. Okay. Oh, okay. So majority of you answered letter D. Merong sumagot ng letter B. Okay, merong letter A. Letter D. I think globalization in education is one of the topic under the subject social dimensions. Uh, Ituturo ito sa asignaturang social dimensions in your prof ed. Uh, in college, especially yung mga education, uh, you know, graduates. I'm actually a second course, sir. So, ang aking first uh, course ay AB Political Science. And then, I took up, okay, units in education. Okay, majority of you answered letter D. Some of you answered letter A. All right. So, first, let us define what is globalization. Kasi medyo magkakaiba ang inyong mga sagot. So, una nating, uh, una nating, he defining globalization. The word globalization simply means how we are now conducting trade, okay, and uh, businesses, which become which makes the world borderless. So everything is now. When you say everything now is global, we are trying to connect to the world with the, the kind of innovations, the technology that we have been offered, like the internet. Okay, so this is actually a an effect. You no, know? one of the things that globalization brought to the world and brought to the people. So it makes us more connected and interdependent as, as a place and as a community. So we are looking for a negative statement. Kasi ang sagot doon ay let number, ang sagot doon ay which is not true. Okay? Uh, which is not true about globalization. So ano doon ang hindi totoo? Now, some of you answered as advanced by ASEAN heads of state, the three distinct pillars. I think the statement about globalization as a term to describe how trade and technology or how we conduct businesses across the world is within that pillar, economic, social, cultural, and political. Because of globalization, we are now not only changing products and services, but we are also exchanging ideas, culture, and of course, what we call political ideas. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, tama ang letter D. Now, if you look at letter A, it affects all countries. Again, when you say global, lahat tayo. So the statement it affects all countries is still true. 
Kapag kasi sinabi mo namang it is one of the most dominant forces, yes, it is also true. So since we are looking for an answer that is negative and it's not aligned to the question, the correct answer is letter B. What makes letter B a wrong statement is because it says it seeks to explain. That's not the purpose of globalization. Hindi parte ng trabaho ng globalization na ipaliwanag. Okay? Na ipaliwanag kung paano nag integrate po, nagkakaroon ng exchange of economies ang iba't ibang locality sa buong mundo. Rather, globalization is a term that applies to all. So hindi niya trabaho ang i-explain. Kundi it is a byproduct of how we conduct business and in that, you know, and in that exchange of product and services, there is instances. Now, somebody said, sa isa daw book ay di ang sagot. Now, take note that by using your common sense, ito lang ko sinasabi sa mga nag-review. When you buy a book, especially kapag ka ito ay nabibili mo lang sa bookstore at hindi naman siya nilelecture ng lecturer, there are instances that, you know, it can be typographical error. Now, when they copy-paste the answer, it's not really accurate and it's not true. So that commonly happens. Okay, especially if it's printed, yung mga libro na bibili lang. So, dapat hindi ka automatic na nagre-rely lang doon sa naisulat ng sagot. Instead, you have to use your knowledge, you have to use your common sense, and you have to use your instinct. That is how you build your self-confidence into becoming the next board top butcher. Kasi kung ang gagawin natin ay babasahin na natin ang tanong, tapos itatatak natin sa utak na ito ang tamang sagot. Remember, you are no longer using your ability to analyze and of course, to comprehend the question. Okay? Remember that you are blessed with the opportunity to read the question, to understand, and to analyze. So it does not follow that because it is printed in that kind of book that you bought from the bookstore, it automatically is true. You still have to exercise your ability to understand the question. So to correct that mindset, na yun ang tamang sagot, that is not true. The correct answer is letter B because the question is not true. Not true. Remember, ASEAN is an organization of countries. And remember, ASEAN, okay, is also part of an influence of what we call globalization. But thank you for bringing that up, Win. Okay, Win. Thank you for bringing that up. Okay, again, the correct answer is letter B, boy, because the word seeks to explain is not part of the job of the, it's not part of the job of globalization. Okay, All right, very good. I, uh, I love it that we have an interaction despite the fact that you know, hindi naman tayo live na face-to-face, -face. hindi ito ay virtual. Okay, let's take a look at another question, okay? This is another uh, definition question or what? Number eight question, what does the statement, okay, quote-unquote, with the advent of information and communications technology, learning has become borderless. So you have to look for the meaning of that statement. With the advent of ICT, learning has become borderless. Anong tamang sagot? Information and acquisition dissemination, as well as delivery of education all over the globe has been made with ICT. Boundaries and limitations are set. Teaching and learning today are expensive. The use of internet, modern laptops, tablets, iPhones, and other gadgets has borders. Okay, this is a very easy question. Again, always remember kapag ka prof ed, pag positibo ang tanong, positibo ang sagot. Kapag ka negatibo ang tanong, then negatibo din ang sagot. Okay, Ninia answered first, followed by Amy, Elena, Win, Geraldine. Okay, we have Bahad. We also have Edwards, Paula, Gazelle, Eleanor, Rika, May, Sherlyn, Arlene. Okay, and bibilis ninyo sumagot. I think our internet connection is improving. Uh, si girl, and nag-type siya ng letter S. Girl, I think nag-type po error ka ng pag-type kasi letter S ang iyong sinagot. Okay, we all agree that the correct answer is letter A, alpha. Okay, meron sumukot ng letter D. Although letter D is a correct statement, but look at the word has borders. Our statement says borderless. So kapag ka borderless, ibig sabihin walang border. Walang restrictions at walang limitations, which means that letter D statement is actually stated contrary to the statement of Number eight, meron sumagot ng letter C. Letter C, teaching are expensive. Although it may be true that uh, teaching and learning today are expensive, especially if you enroll in the private school. Okay, but teaching actually is available to all. Meron na tayong public school, di ba, Vince? Uh, hindi siya letter D kasi again, you are asked to interpret 
the statement borderless, ang letter D ay may salitang borders. So, it is opposite. Okay? So, ang tamang sagot ay letter A, alpha. Okay? The necessity of ICT is explained that ICT helps in improving teaching and learning and that ICT helps us to connect to the rest of the world. Okay, now let's continue with question number nine. This is about peace education. The following are attributes of peace education, except, so the words except is all in capital letters. So take note of that. There are instances your mind or your eyes reads faster than your mind. So be very careful when reading questions. So what do we mean? Or we're looking for a negative answer. A responsible global citizen has the skills of communication, is motivated by service, but expects rewards, lifelong learner who continues to improve his or her own learning abilities. Very good. I think you are improving in terms of how you interpret questions. Very good. A negative question requires you to look for a negative answer. Okay, napakadali lang naman ang tanong na ito, di ba? It's a negative question, so therefore, it's a negative answer. Letter A is purely positive, responsible, global. Uh, letter B, communication, conflict resolution, that's positive. Letter D, continues to improve. Ang lifelong learning is positive, so the only negative statement is letter C, motivated by service but expects rewards. Okay, so very good. Sabi ni Eleanor, kasi mami yung expects, oh, di ba? Very good to Eleanor, meron pa rin siyang rationalization. Okay, so the correct answer, of course, is letter C. O, sabi kasi, eh, kasi nga ang tanong ay exact. So, ang expect makes that statement negative. Okay, perfect. Moving forward, let's now rush to the remaining question number 10. Which of the following is a correct statement? O, di ba? Yes, sabi ni Paula, except sure. Okay, number 10. Which of the following is a correct statement for education for sustainable development? A, it is economic development at the expense of the environment. Letter B, concerns economic and social development, the environmental protection. Letter C, it is social development through exclusive education. Letter D, it concerns only the developing countries. Okay, look at the choices. We're looking for a correct statement. Okay, you are asked to choose a correct statement. The correct statement, of course, is that you are asked to define what is education for sustainable development. Okay, so si Vina ang una nakasagot. Sabi niya letter B, Remy. Hello, Remy, Rami or Remy. Wait lang, ha? Hello, Rami, Badilia, magandang gabi. I miss you. I miss all of you. Si Rami kasi ay kaibigan ko. Okay, hello. So, iba-iba ang yung sagot. May sumagot ng letter D. Okay. Again, we're looking for a correct statement. Now, it's raining here in Tagayan Dior. Medyo umuulan na siya. All right. So, yung iba sa inyo medyo ano na. Okay. Meron lang uh, iba na sumagot ng letter C at letter D. Okay. Ang tanong ay tungkol sa sustainable development. So, for you to be guided, the definition of sustainable development is uh, largely nakafocus siya sa environmental education. However, uh, the education for sustainable development is also um interrelated with other areas such as our uh, such as of course cultural okay including social and economic so of course the environment is needed by everyone and whatever happens to the environment has an effect okay for all other areas and other factors of the economy so technically ang ating tinatawag na ESD or education for sustainable development concerns not only the environment, but also the economic and social development. So, ang tamang sagot dito ay letter B, boy. Okay, kasi si letter D, sabi niya only the developing countries. That is not true because uh, ESD is needed by all countries across the world. Kung ang sagot mo naman ay letter C, it is social development through exclusive education. Again, that is not true because we are promoting inclusive, not exclusive, kundi inclusive. Uh, ang sustainable kasi ay 
pang matagalan. Yun yung sa Tagalog na ibig sabihin ng sustainable. Dapat pang matagalan ang kanyang epekto at ang kanyang magiging contribution okay, to the world. So that's why we answered letter B, which is the only answer to the question. Okay, let's proceed to question number 11. This is very easy. One of the most repeated question in the board. What school function is developed when we internalize the meaning of suffrage and apply it during election times? That A, political function, B, cultural function, letter C, social function, letter D, economic function. Okay, your 10 seconds starts now. You can type in your answer. Oh, ito tayo si Eleanor, I very ano, active. Okay, meron din siyang comment, concern and protection. O, oh, diba? Talagang nagbabasa siya. Okay, very participative. Marlon was the first. Letter A, yung kanyang sagot. Powed by Wynn, si Fahad, si Agnes, si Ella May, si Ren, si Sherlyn, si Mavic, okay, si Rami. Hello, Rami. Thank you for joining us. Si Charlie. Sabi ni Charlie, letter C. Okay, Leslie, Rika, ay letter A. Si Angelito ay letter D. Okay. Louise, I letter B. Okay, ang iba, Diony, I letter D. Now, take note, this is a very easy question, ha? Very easy question ito, ladies and gentlemen. So, it can make or break your letter rating. Sometimes kasi doon kayo nagkakatalo sa easy, eh. Di naman sa moderate at saksa difficult question. Okay. So, let us try to understand the question. We asked about Remember the functions of the school. Under social dimensions, there are four specific functions of the school. Ito ang mga letrang letter C, letter P, letter S, and letter E, or CPSE. So ano ba si letter C? Si letter C ay cognitive, which means that the school is expected to transmit knowledge. Okay, that's cognitive function. Ang letter P ay political function, which we will discuss later on. Ang letter S ay social function. This is about pertaining to socialization and expectations as members of society. And then ang letter D naman ay economic or technical function, which means that the school have the responsibility to produce graduates who will become part of the industries or become backbone of the economy. That's why we are trained not only with knowledge but also skills with values to become contributing members of society in relation to the economy. Now. What do we mean by suffrage? Of course, the word suffrage means the right to vote. So when you talk about suffrage, you are talking about your right as a citizen. So ito ay may kinalaman sa iyong political rights. Okay? So the correct answer for number 11 is actually letter uh, it's actually letter A, political function. Hindi letter D, kasi sa letter D ay tungkol naman sa economic. Again, kapag ka economic, it pertains to training and preparation for work. Kapag a cultural function, it still is listed under cognitive because apart from knowledge is also culture. Okay, so take note, political function is one of the purposes of the school in which the citizens are taught how to love and be loyal to the country. That's why in our curriculum, we talk about the Philippine geography, we have Philippine history, you are required to enroll in basic subjects in college like the Constitution of the Philippines because that's part of how the school is mandated to train future citizens of the state. So the correct answer for number 11 is letter A, political function. Okay. Next, we are now on question number 12. This is based on legal provisions. Okay, based on RA10533, the Enhanced Basic Education Act of 2013 is a non-licensed teacher allowed to teach in the K-12 curriculum full-time. Again. Are they allowed to teach in the K-12 curriculum full-time? Letter A, yes, provided he or she obtains a license within five years from the time of hiring. Letter B, no, no one may teach without a license. Letter C, yes, only in fact book track where there is dearth of qualified teachers. Letter D, that depends on the policy of the education institution. Okay, let's take a look at your answers. Some of you answers letter A. Somebody said letter D. But that depends Meron din namang letter C. Okay, yes, only in textbook track. Oh, diba? Merong iba't ibang interpretation. Okay. 
Now, let me give you a, a heads up. When you're trying to look for an explanation that is relative to a legal provision, o may kinilaman sa batas, hindi sagot ang that depends. Okay? Kasi ang that depends, hindi ka sigurado, parang hindi ka sure. Okay? So again, a, a law is very specific in terms of its provision and in terms also of its explanation. Okay? So dapat hindi tayo sumasagot ng that depends. Okay? That depends. Kasi hindi siya specific. Kung hindi parang, hindi. Depende. Okay? Wala namang depende. Okay? Kahit sa pag-ibig, hindi rin pwedeng depende. Ha? Kamo ha? Kayo talaga. Okay. Sabi dito, your internet connection is unstable. But we will. We will be, uh, we will finish everything uh, tonight. Okay. Ano ang tamang sagot? Kung hindi pwede ang that depends, ma'am Rara. Okay. We refer to RA 10533. So according to RA 10533, Section 8, on the hiring of graduates, okay, particularly in science, math, statistics, engineering, and other subjects with a shortage of qualified applicants, technical vocational courses, and higher institutions faculty, ayon sa batas, when the shortage of teachers, okay, is observable, then... Okay, meron tayong tinatawag na they can be hired. Okay, they can be admitted to the foundations. Okay, provided that they pass the LEP within five years after their date of hiring. Provided further that if such graduates are willing to teach on part-time basis, the provisions of LEP shall no longer be required. So going back to the question, Based is a non-licensed teacher allowed to teach in a K-12 curriculum full-time? Okay, citing the same law. The correct answer is yes, provided he or she obtains a license within five years from the time of hiring. Now, this is applicable for senior high school. That's why meron dyan nakasaad sa section A, hiring of graduates of science, mathematics, statistics, engineering and other subjects with a shortage of qualified applicants. Again, priority pa rin na iha-hire yung qualified applicants with license. But in the event na walang lisensya at wala rin namang available for shortage of qualified applicants, they are allowed to teach provided that they pass the net uh, within five years after their date of hiring. Sabi ni Robert, paano yun ma'am, e walang exam for two years, paano yung napas na na napaso na doon napasok na doon sa 5 years i think they will also expand uh, because of the situation okay i think there are guidelines that will be issued by the prc including the ed uh, but i believe that they will also uh, adjust because it is common knowledge na wala naman talagang board examination okay so to answer robert's question uh, but we have to refer to the exact memorandum or guidelines to be issued by the ed including the ones to be issued by the PRC. But if we stick to what is provided in the law, ito ang sinasabi ng batas within five years. Okay? So the correct answer is letter A, alpha. Okay? Now let us try to answer another legal-related question. Sabi ni Eleanor, nag-extend po sila today hanggang 2022. Wow, iba talaga si Eleanor. Itong si Eleanor parang sekretary yata ito ng DepEd. Ha, Eleanor? Tayo sa'yo nag Thank you for informing us, Eleanor. Nag-expend ko sila today hanggang 2022. Wow, congratulations. I think that's good news for everyone who have been affected by the, you know, by the, the, the by what is happening right now. O si Wynn nag-answer na siya bago binasa yung tanong. Thank you, Wynn. Based on RA 92-93, may all who failed in the left be deployed as para teachers. A, no, only those with a rating of 70 to 74. Letter B, yes, C, yes, only in places where there are no applicants. Letter D, that depends on teachers' need of the community. Okay, let's see kung merong maligaw na ibang sagot. I think most of you who are typing your answers in the chat box is now writing A. Sabi, yes, ma'am, isa po ako sa provisionary teacher. Wow. Hello, ma'am Gigi. Saro siya sa mga provisionary teacher. Okay, congratulations, ma'am Gigi. Don't worry, you will achieve your license or you will acquire your license on Sunday. Si Angelito, sabi niya letter D, that depends. 
di ba? And dito sinabi ko na yan kanina, hindi dapat sumagot ng that depends kung tungkol ito sa batas. Si RB ay letter B. Yes. Okay. Another point that you have to remember kapag kabatas ang tanong, hindi ka pwedeng sumagot ng yes, period, no, period. Uulitin ko. Kapag ang tanong ay may kinalaman sa batas, hindi pwedeng sumagot ng yes, period, no, period. It should always follow with yes because, no because, yes except, yes no except. Again ha? Uh, tandaan nyo ito, hindi po rin sumagot ng uh, tungkol sa batas o may kinalaman sa batas na ang sagot ay puro lang yes, period, no, period. Dapat ma-explanation kasi isa sa ito yung batas. Eh. Okay? Again, hindi po rin ang that depends. Okay? Now, okay, kasi meron mga sumagot na letter B, ha? Uulitin ko, baka meron naman tayong tanong later on tungkol sa batas, sasagot na naman kayo ng yes, no. Okay? Alam mo, ang mga yes at no ay applicable lamang yan sa mga tanong na specific. Kaya kumain ka na. Yes, you can pwede sumagot ng yes because you know, as you can see, my teeth is no longer white and merong mga natitirang pagkain doon. ba? Diba? Common sense yun. May mga tanong na pwedeng sagutin ng yes at no period. Okay? But if it is a law-related question, then there has to be an explanation. Kasi merong batas na kinupol. Okay, let's go back to question number 13, ladies and gentlemen. The correct answer is no. Letter A, alpha, and no. Only those with an average rating of 70 to 74. This is based on the provision of RA 90 to 93. This law actually amended some sections of RA number 7836, otherwise known as the Philippine Professionaliz Teachers Professionalization Act of 1994, kung saan defines sa section 26 under registration and exception, that those who fail the licensure examination for teachers with a rating of not lower than 5 percentage points in the passing general average rating shall be eligible as para teachers, okay, by the board of a two-year special permit renewable for a non-extendable period of two years. Okay, so again ha, meron itong tinatawag na definition ng ating tinatawag na para teachers. Okay, so ang tamang sagot ay letter A, no. Okay. All right, so let's continue now on question number 14. Okay, just one moment. Let me just reply. Okay, there are urgent messages that I need to attend to. Okay, thank you for waiting. Let's now discuss on question number 14. Learners must be taught to take a stand and defend the same after a thorough analysis on the issues is some advice from A slash and blank. Okay, this is under philosophy of education. A existentialist, B progressivist, letters C rationalist, B empiricist. Okay, so you are given 10 seconds to answer the question. Okay. Oh, look at the question. This is philosophy. Ito yung madalas ninyong nare-reklamo. Now, keep in mind, dapat positibo ang ating pananaw. Hindi naman buong 150 questions sa let ay forum philosophies. But to help you, okay, but to help you in terms of understanding questions, you can actually interpret philosophies by going to the root word. So, ang gagawin, tatanggalin. Okay? Again, ha? Tatanggalin mo lahat ng IST or yung mga salita na hindi naman kasala sa original root word. Halimbawa, existentialist. The root word is existential. Progressivist is the word progressive or progress. Letter C, rationalist is from the word rational. Okay? And then, of course, letter D, empiricist can also be uh, what we call empirical. So, iba-iba ang, ang root word na pinagmula ng philosophy. So, that is to help you na hindi kayo uh, ma-confuse doon sa real meaning ng philosophy. You know, you simplify uh, the definition okay, of the philosophy. Okay, marami sa inyo sumagot ng letter uh, meron mga sumagot ng letter A, substantialist. Letter C, sabi niya, because you have to make a stand and defend. Ah, oh, iba din si Magdam. Sino ba si Magot nun? Si Alice. O, oh, si Ma'am Alice. C, because to take a stand and defend. Ah, oh, iba talaga si Alice. Meron din siyang ano talaga. Okay, pinaghuhugutan. Okay. Now, 
let us simplify philosophies. Kapag kasi sinabi mo existential, existence precedes essence, the basis of your decision is because you have a choice. You have the freedom to choose. Wala kang ibang iisipin kundi karapatan ko ito, kaligayahan ko ito, kung saan ako masaya, doon ako. Kung, uh, kung ano ang dapat, kung dahil may karapatan akong pumili, huwag mo kong diktahan kung ano ang makapagpapasaya sa akin. Okay? Yun ang ibig sabihin ng existential. Sabi ni Alice letter A, hindi. Alice, makinig ka muna, nagdi-discuss ako. Si existential, ibig sabihin, your existence presence is essence. Ang ibig sabihin, mas importante sa iyo na may freedom ka. You have the freedom to choose, regardless if whether your choice is good or not. Basta may freedom ka. Kapag kasi sinabi mo namang progressivist, ang ibig sabihin ng progressivist from the word progress, meaning change or growth. When you say progressive, you're adaptable to change. That's why we always adjust our instruction according to the needs and interests of our students. That's being progressivist. Kapag kasi sinabi mo namang empiricist, there's emphasis on the senses. Or what will satisfy you according to your senses. Now, the question says, learners must be taught to take a stand. Sa Tagalog, ang ibig niyo sabihin dapat ay pumili ka at panindigan mo ang iyong pinili. Okay? Ang tamang sagot ay letter, letter C, rationalist. Anong ibig sabihin ng rationalist or rationalism? Rationalism is the practice of only believing what is based on reason and logic. Hindi mo pwedeng sabihin ito ay existentialism. Dahil existentialism revolves around your ability to make a choice. But the question is not talking about choice. It talks about how you should make a stand. Okay? How you make a stand or reason out or to defend your action. To take a stand and defend the same. Remember, sa, sa existentialism, you are not asked to defend. You are simply respected because that is your freedom of choice. Okay? Kaya na kapag may kaibigan ka, yung uh, nag, nag humihingi ng advice tungkol sa boyfriend niya na problemado siya, tapos sinasabi mo na, you know, ikaw, ikaw existentially sasabihin mo yung friend mo na ikaw, bahala ka, kung saan ka masaya, doon ka. Okay, yan ang bayingin is existential. Kapag sinabi mong rational, sasabihin mo yung friend mo, my God, best, namitin mo naman yung utak mo. Okay? Ganito yung boyfriend mo, so dapat gawin mo. Okay, so that's being rational. Kapag sinabi mo namang, progressivist, then maybe you should say na siguro naman dapat mag-adjust ka din, no? Kasi tagal na kayong boyfriend-girlfriend so alam mo ng problema ng boyfriend mo, so ang gagawin mo ngayon, dapat mag-adjust ka din. Diba? Iba-iba ang advice ng tao depende sa pananaw at prinsipyo mo sa buhay. Okay? So again, if you're rational, you make a stand and you defend your choice. Okay? Good. Kasi na si Alice na naguluhan siya. Okay, let's move on to question number 15. 15 is about another philosophy question. The question says, with a curriculum decongestion, the first subjects that are dropped are philosophy, arts, humanities, and the like, on which philosophy is the curriculum decongestion anchored. Is that A, existentialism, B, utilitarianism, letter C, perennialism, letter D, progressivism. Okay? There's what you call curriculum decongestion. What is this kind of philosophy? Sabi ni Irene, rationalist, defend or to reason out. Yes, Irene. Oh, ito naguluhan sila. Matagal na silang nag-type ng kanilang sagot. Parang iniisip pa nila, ay mali ako kanina. Oh, sabi ni Char Charlie, A, B. Si Raven naman ay C. B. Si Alice ay letter D. Progressivism. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, so this is another philosophy questions. Some of you answered letter B, some of you answered letter C, letter A, letter D. So magkakaiba ang inyuhang sagot. Okay, big sabihin, hindi nyo alam, hindi kayo sigurado o magkakaiba kayo ng pinasukang uh, pag-aaral. Iba-iba yung preparation. Okay, again, let's go back. <clears throat> The question says, existential, existence, it's your ability to make a choice. There's freedom involved. Okay, your ability to exercise your freedom and your ability to make a choice. Letter B naman, utilitarianism for the word utility, meaning useful. Uh, perennialism, tatanggalin natin ang ISM. Perennial is everlasting. It's universal. Our belief that you know some subjects and some topics are long-lasting. Okay? And then letter D, progressivism is about change and growth. 
adapting to the needs and the interests of the child. Okay, but the question says, when a curriculum decongestion, the first subjects that are dropped are curriculum ay puno, punong-puno siya ng mga subject, ni bawa. At ang una nating pinatanggal, pinatagalog ko na yung tanong ha, ang una nating pinatanggal ay ang mga subjects na humanities and philosophy. Ano daw ang philosophy o principle behind it? So kung ang sagot mo ay perennialism, perennialism is true in, in the sense na ang philosophy, humanities, and arts are subjects under perennialism. But that is not the question. The question tells you, tatanggalin mo ang mga subject na ito. So bakit mo tatanggalin? Ano ang rationale? O ano ang explanation behind it? Ano ba ang principle ng pagtanggal ng mga ganitong subject? Kung ito pala ay perennialist, meaning it is needed according to perennialism, pero tatanggalin mo siya. Okay? Ang tamang sagot, ladies and gentlemen, ay letter B, utilitarianism. From the word utility or useful, ayon sa philosophy ito, the idea is that actions are morally right or wrong, depends on their effects, and that pleasure or happiness is the only thing that has value, and actions are right in so far as they promote happiness, and everyone's happiness counts equally. Okay? So ano ba ang usefulness ng iyong gagawin? Yun ang ibig sabihin. So ang principle behind drafting those subject is because they congested na. Masyari nang puno ang curriculum. <clears throat> so bakit natin sila tatanggalin? Kasi nga ang usefulness nila ay hindi na kailangan. So yun ang ibig sabihin ng tanong. Hindi ang subject itself. But the question is, bakit po siya tatanggalin? Dahil ang principle doon, hindi siya useful. Kasi nga, punong-punong na siya, di ba? So dapat tatanggalin. Bakit po siya tatanggalin? Because you're looking at the usefulness of the subject. So that's why the philosophy behind it is utilitarianism, hindi perennialism. Again, uulitin natin. Sa so existentialism, isasagot mo siya kung ang tanong ay tungkol sa ability ng tao to make a choice and exercise that freedom of choice. Okay? Alimbawa, ang tanong is that the teacher okay, would normally leave the students the choice okay, to make their activities whatsoever that is being existential. Ang basis ng decisions mo at ang action mo is because you believe that every individual is capable of making a choice. Okay, yun ang existentialism. Kapag sinasabi mo namang progress, i-adjust mo ang sarili mo depending sa needs and interests ng mga estudyante mo. Okay? Kapag sinabi mo namang perennial, you believe that there are things that you should discuss and repeat because they are necessary because it's everlasting. Meaning to say, kahit anong mangyari, nandiyan pa rin yan, like arts. Arts do not die. Arts exist. And they are true across all generations. Okay? Kapag sinabi mo namang utilitarianism, because this is a common question in the net, lagi isipin, utilitarianism is from the word utility. Utility meaning useful. Na ang ibig sabihin, ano ba ang usefulness ng action na ito sa mga taong involved? E bakit mo ito gagawin? Ano ba ang makukuha? Kung ang tinitingnan mo ay kung ano ang magiging benefit ng action na ito para sa iba at para sa iyo, then your principle behind it is utilitarianism. Okay? So I hope, okay, at least kahit pa paano ay maliwanagan kayo doon. Alright, let's continue on question number 16. This is another philosophy questions. Okay. Number 16. If you are afraid to be different from the rest, even if you are convinced that you are right, makes you far from being a slash an period. Okay. Are you a existentialist? Let her be pragmatist. Let her see utilitarianist. Be rationalist. Again, if you are afraid to be different from the rest, even if you are right, makes you far. Malayo ka doon. Okay? Sa dapat ay ganitong klase o uri ng tao, anong prinsipyo ito? Is that a existentialist, be pragmatist, let us see utilitarianist, be rationalist. Okay? I am giving you 10 seconds to answer. Most of you answer letter A. Somebody says letter A and then another one answers letter B. Okay. What I can observe is that you are having problems interpreting questions in the philosophy. So if I may give you a suggestion, I need you to start studying philosophy 
based on its root word. Okay? Root word tayo ha. Bumalik tayo doon sa pinakapuno ng salita. Okay? Huwag mong i-memorize at basahin ang philosophy according to what is listed in the book, but rather go back to the basics of the word. Yung pinaka-root word niya, yun ang babasihan mo sa iyong uh, sagot or uh, how you interpret philosophies. Okay? This is a question. You are supposed to make. Okay? You are supposed to be yourself. Diba? You know, CBC, you are afraid to be different. You are supposed to be yourself, but what are you doing? You are trying to copy, okay, people, because you are afraid to be different. Ayaw mo, tingnan ka ng ibang tao na iba ka sa kanila. So kung ano sila, kung sinusuot na ay blue, nag-blue pa din, kahit hindi naman blue ang paborito mong kulay. So ano daw ang hindi mo ginamit? Ano yung classing principle o philosophy ang hindi mo ginamit? Okay? Some of you answered letter D, rationalist. Are we talking about reasons or logic here? You are not exercising your reason. You simply just follow the flow. Hindi mo sinusunod ang sarili mong utak. Sinusunod mo kung ano yung sinasabi ng iba. Is that being rational? Is that being reasonable? Are you reasonable kapag ka sinusunod mo yung ibang tao kahit na palagay mo ay tama ka? Oh. Why are you answering letter D, rationalist? Kung ang prinsipyo mo naman ay, di ba ang rational, ibig sabihin you're reasonable, you're exercising your ability to reason, your ability to use your logic. So kung susunod ka lang sa iba, so hindi yan being logical, hindi yan being reasonable. You are simply a copycat. Okay? Hindi ka, namuhopya ka lang. Sinusunod mo lang yung ibang tao. So this is not what is uh, asked by the question. The situation tells you na hindi, ayaw mong i-exercise yung yung pagiging unique mo. Kung hindi ang ginagawa mo ay nangungupya ka. So ano ba dapat kasi ang gagawin mo? The correct answer is letter A, alpha. Existentialist. Okay? Si existentialist ay nagsasabing your individuality is important and that you are responsible for your own life. Okay? And that existence is always particular and individual. It is not based from other people. It is not based from the perception of other people kung hindi ang uh, existentialist ay according to what you believe in and according to who you are as a person. That's being unique. Yan ang ibig sabihin ng existentialist. Okay? So again, ha, hindi ko ito being what you call a uh, rationalist. Kasi hindi ka naman gumagamit ng reason at logic. Kundi ang ginagawa mo ay ginagamit mo lang ang reason. Okay? Please, uh, okay, uh, I'm, I'm trying to utilize and uh, maximize our time. Again, let me just remind you, para hindi kayo ma-confuse, because definitely you will have questions relative to the philosophy of learning. Please go back to the root word. Kapag ka sinabi mong essentialism, essential, what is essential is necessary, that is traditional approach to teaching. Yan ang ginagamit natin sa elementary. Traditional meaning basics. Reading, writing, arithmetic, your Your basis of teaching and your basis of learning is what is necessary. Okay? Regardless kung gusto ng bata o ayaw niya, basta ito yung standard, ito yung nakagawian, naka ito yung tama. Yun ang essentialism. Kapag ka existentialism, ang hahanapin mo, is there a choice here being used by the, by the person? Okay? Is there what we call a freedom or individual accountability? na sinasabi ng question, yun ang existentialism. That's why this question number 16 is existentialist because what the person fails to exercise is his being individual, his being unique as an individual. Instead of making his own choice, ang ginawa niya, nangopia siya sa iba kahit alam niya tama siya, so yun ang pagiging, he fails on being an existentialist. Kapag sinasabi mo naman na ikaw ay rational, ang basis ng iyong decision making is reason logic, ano yung tama, ano yung pinaniningan mong tama at ano yung paniniwala mong tama. Okay? Now, if you talk about another uh, another uh, philosophy which is progressivist, again, you adjust your instruction and learning according to the needs and the interests of the child. Kapag ka utilitarianism, ang gusto mo namang tingnan ay kung ano ang usefulness ng decision sa mga taong involved. Okay? Sa mga taong involved. Kapag ka pragmatic, Pragmatic means practical. So there is emphasis of the application of knowledge. So hindi lang siya purely cognitive. Hindi mo tinitinan ang bata na matalino dahil alam niya. Tinitinan mo ang bata na matalino dahil meron siyang application ng knowledge. 
practicality. What is practical? What will work according to the need of time? What will work because it is necessary? It's being practical. Okay, yan ang ibig sabihin ng pragmatic, which is the Roman system of learning. Okay? Um, I hope that, uh, you know, there's a few days more before the actual board. Uh, huwag mong i-pressure ang sarili mo na intindihin ang philosophy uh, according to what is written in any website. Okay? Uh, sabi ni Diony, mahirap ang ISEM. That is why Diony, I'm giving you tip. Do not read from online unless you will have the proper time and the proper assistance of someone who can help you. Rather, what you need to do is atanggalin mo lahat ng ISM, gamitin mo ang dictionary, hanapan mo ng synonym na word ang philosophy at dun ka mag-stick sa definition at i-apply mo siya. Again, you have to look at philosophy from the root word, the meaning of that word, and then the application. So you have to talk to yourself. Kung kapag kasi sinabi ko existence, essential, may freedom of choice. So kausapin mo yung sarili mo sa katanong, freedom of choice ba ito? Ito ba ay practicality? Ito ba ay tungkol sa reason or logic? So that will simplify your interpretation of the philosophy. Okay? Sabi ni Daisy, ako lang ba na nakalimutan na ang lahat? Uh, I think, Daisy, it is normal na nakakalimutan because you are feeling the pressure uh, that in a few days time you'll be taking the board examination. So it's perfectly all right to feel sad today. That's why we have final coaching. You know, we are trying to iron out and to try to bridge the gap of your understanding uh, of the philosophy. Okay. But you should not feel bad because wala pa naman ang board exam. So there, you still have time in terms of correcting yourself. Remember, you will remember the things that I am discussing to you today, lalo na kapag kamali ang, uh, na kapag kamali ang sagot mo. Okay? Because it will have a, you know, an emotional attachment to you na, oh my God, mali yung sagot ko during the final coaching. Maiisip mo yun. Okay? So don't feel sad today. Look at it as an opportunity to improve yourself. All right? So let's continue. We're down to you know half of the questions. We still have to discuss more. Okay, this will feel, make you feel good. Medyo madali ito. Which statement is not true about Shed? It oversees education program. It is governed by commissioners. It is supervises both public and private education. It regulates and supervises tertiary education. Okay, what is the correct answer? You're welcome, Gem Gemeline. Ganyan ang pangalan niya, Gemeline. Okay, what do you think is the answer to question number 17? Type, type in your answers. Oh, of course, kaya ra, ma'am, laban lang. Of course, you are paying the PRC, so why should you be worried? Okay. Oh, somebody says letter B, while most of you answer letter A. Not true, ha? So we're looking for a negative statement. Sure, jud mo. Okay. <laughs> Okay, we're looking for a negative statement, which is not true. Very good. I think I only see one answer that is uh, not the same with the rest of the group. The correct answer, of course, is letter A. Oversee education at all levels. Your CHED or your Commission in Higher Education was established based on RA 7722. And that the Commission in Higher Education is given the task to monitor public and private institutions of higher education or tertiary level. So kapag ka basic ed, we're talking of kindergarten, elementary, and secondary, including junior and senior high school. That's under DepEd, while your CHED, your Commission in Higher Education, is in charge of the public and private college institution or their work overtime, as requested a percentage of his regular remuneration after he has completed at least six hours of actual teaching should be paid to him as additional compensation. Okay, so what do you think is the amount needed? Okay, what do you think is the amount needed? Or sorry, amount, it's not the amount, but the percentage that shall be granted uh, to Mr. Ch Sanchez. Sabi ni Mavic, ma'am, I learned a lot from you. Thank you, Mavic, for appreciating my input uh, to all of you today. 
God bless to all of you. I have already congratulated to all of you, congratulated all of you earlier. So I will look for all of your names and the pastor's list. And we are praying and hoping to produce a top notch shirt from your batch. Okay, what do you think is the answer for question number 18? Mauulan na siya dito sa Cagayan de Oro. Okay, I think most of you are from other parts of the Philippines. Sabi ni Gazelle kanina, DepEd K-12. Okay, so what do you think is the correct answer to question number 18? All right, so we refer to, of course, your Magna Carta. So ayon sa inyong Magna Carta for Public School Teachers, what is provided under RA 4670 is that in your exigency of service, you are allowed at least 25% on top of your regular salary as part of your compensation. So bilang bahagi ng iyong additional service, you are given the privilege to earn 25% more on top of your salary. Okay, very good. So this is a very easy question. This is factual question. Okay, let's move on to question number 19. This is a multiple response question. The question says, what is or are true of learning to be? The following statements are reflect a shift from the education, productivity to a humanistic view, emphasizes the development of the complete person, focuses on the development of reason only. So we are defining what do we mean, what do we mean by learning to be? I think if you have joined me in the final coaching session discussion under social dimensions, we discuss uh, the pillars of learning. Okay, that includes your learning to be. What is the correct answer for number 19? Okay. Nahina ang ating internet. All right. So, if we look at the definition, oh, sabi ni Lance, parang B ang naalala ko. O, oh, di ba Lance? Minsan talaga ang mga alaala ng nakalipas ay dapat na nati. Dapat na nating ano, Lance? Dapat na nating kalimutan. Okay, may mga alaala na dapat na nating kalimutan dahil ito ay mga alaala na lamang. Okay. Learning to be as defined by the Semeo Enotech Group according to their course on Guru 21, learning to be involves activities that promotes holistic personal development, body, mind, and spirit for an all-around complete person. So based on the multiple responses from one, two, and three, ang number three ay focuses on the development of reason only, which is not relevant to the holistic development. Learning to be emphasize your heart. Diba sabi ko? To know, to be, to do, to live together, and then transform. So of course, the heart balances your mind and your actions. So definitely, it completes you. So the correct answer for number 19 ay letter C, 1 and 2. Diba? Okay ka na, Lance? <laughs> Kasabi ni Lance, pa, parang B ang naalala ko. Ito talaga si Lance. Okay lang yan, Lance. Ang mahalaga ay may naalala pa rin tayo. Okay, question number 20, ladies and gentlemen. Another multiple response question under pillars of learning. Which statement or statements on learning to do is slash are correct? Learning to do calls for new types of skills. Number two, the material and the technology are becoming secondary. Number three, learning to do implies a shift from skill to competence. So which of the following is a correct statement? A, one, two, and three. Letter B, two, and three. Letter C, one, and two. And letter D, one, and three. Okay? So you focus on the question and then you type in your answer to the question. Okay, meron na tayong 274. Ah, sabi ni Eleanor kanina, kasi may only yung number three. Ah, may only daw. Dapat walang only, Eleanor, sa pag-ibig lang. Only you. Okay. Iba rin to si Eleanor. Sabi ni Alice, past is past lands. Okay. That is why after X, you have Y. Okay. And then Z. Minsan lang talaga nagiging successful ang balikan mo ang X. Char lang. Okay. So ano ang sagot natin sa number 20? 
Tigilan niyo na yung mga hugot-hugot niyo dyan. Okay. The correct answer is of course, letter D, Delta 1 and 3. Dahil, okay, dahil ang learning to do, have emphasis on the use of your hands. And learning to do tells you that there is the acquisition of skills. And there is, of course, focus on the application of knowledge. So, bakit mali ang number two? Dahil si number two, sabi niya, material and technology are secondary. Hindi siya secondary. In fact, it is considered one of the primary needs to be able to translate learning to do in our classroom. Okay? Sumagot na ba si Lance? Hindi ko na nakita na sumagot, Lance. Huwag kang magdamdam dyan, ha? Okay. Let's continue on question number 21. Okay, this is quite long. However, this is still under pillars of learning. The question is, the International Commission on Education for the 21st Century advocates four pillars of learning. To know, to do, to live together, and learning to be. Since there are peace and cultural diversity problems in the world and everywhere, which of the four pillars should be given more emphasis in teaching? So kung ang problema ay tungkol sa peace and cultural diversity, what pillar of learning should be given emphasis? Is that A, to know, letter B, to do, letter C, learning to be, and letter D, learning to live together? Okay, type in your answers to the question. Type in your answer in the chat box. Baka hindi na sumagot si Lance. Lance, huwag kang magtampo ha. Joke lang yun kanina. Napakahina lang aking internet connection. So kailangan kong i-refresh ng i-refresh. Ang mga sagot. Okay. Sumagot na sina Day, Edward, sina Mavic, sina Harleen. Ang sagot nila ay learning to live together. Very good. Kasi sa learning to live together is one of the pillars of learning. Emphasize on respect and concern for others. It talks about diversity of people and how we live with one another in peace and in harmony. That's why the action is this. What I know what I feel and what I do can be shared to other people. What I know, what I feel, what I do, and what I share to other people can actually change the world. Diba? Ganun lang ang ating pillars of learning. Napakadali. Okay. Now, let, we are down to the last eight questions. This is according to uh, provided in our Magna Carta and the Code of Ethics. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. 22. What does living with dignity in all places at all times, as provided by RA 4670 in Article 11 of the Code of Ethics, include? A. Living together with someone whose marriage has been legally annulled. Let it be judicious disbursement of funds entrusted to the teacher. Inflicting corporal punishment to erring students. Maintaining a mini casino. This is very easy. Madali lang ang tanong na ito. In fact, I have shown the next slides no. Anyway, yung mga mabibilis ang mata, nakita na nila. Okay, let's see. Type in your answers. Oh, sabi ni Rami na question, na question, natanong niyo na po kami niya noon. Sabi ni Jovin, mali din naman ako, ano ba yan? Okay lang yan, Jovin. Kung nagkamali ka ngayon, magiging tama ka na sa actual board exam. O sumagot pa ka na si Lance. Hello, Lance. Quaresma. Tama si Lance kanina sa number 21. Okay, so what is your answer on question number 22? We talk about what is provided according to your Magna Carta and Code of Ethics. Okay, so eto na naman tayo. We are having some problems with our internet connection. Okay, there. I cannot see the, okay, the replies. Okay, okay so hindi na siya. Okay, well, anyway, I'm having problems, you know, reading your replies in the chat box sa Facebook Live. Uh, maybe because the internet connection is low. Oh, there, nakita ko na. Thank you. Okay. So, I think yung iba na wala. Kasi kanina 274 tayo. Ngayon naman ay 255 na lang. Maybe because we are having problems with internet connection. Umuulan na dito. The correct answer for question number 22 is actually we are looking for a positive answer, ha? Ito yung tama according to what we mean by living with dignity. O meron sumagot letter D, maintaining a mini casino. O hindi yan tamang sagot ha. The casino itself is actually uh, illegal kung ito ay nasa inyong komunidad. 
Okay, you have to go through permits to be allowed to operate a casino. So if you look at the definition of professional, according to RA 4670 and your Magna Carta, a professional is someone who actually follows or conforms to the technical or ethical standards of a profession. So what is provided under our code of ethics? And of course, remember your code of ethics is a prescription of the rules and regulation relating to the practice of the profession while your RA 4670, the Magna Carta, provided you your rights and privileges as a public school teacher. Now, the correct answer is actually letter, uh, letter B, boy, judicious disbursement of funds entrusted to the teacher and or administrator. Kasi ang salitang judicious means, according to the dictionary, having, showing, or done with good judgment or sense. In other words, it is legal. So when you say it's judicious, it's legal, it's allowed. So that is what we meant by the only action allowed as living with dignity at all times. Of course, letter A is a no-no. That's not been legally annulled. So that is actually more or less a violation of the code of ethics under our living with dignity principle. Inflicting punishment is another no-no in the practice of our profession. We need to apply positive, negative, and then we resort to punishment as the highest form of discipline but we are promoting positive discipline and we do not allow corporal punishment, okay? So that is why the correct answer is letter B, boy. Okay, now let us continue with question number 23. Sandali ba? Hindi ko masyado nakikita ang inyong mga comments. Okay, sabi ni Abigail, ma'am, pwede makita ulit ang choices sa number 22? Medyo na confused lang o sabi ni. O eto, balikan natin ang number 22. Eto uh, Abigail no to help you. Uh, the first kasi is living together. Okay? So that is not uh, true and that is not correct of course because the marriage is not yet annulled, 'di ba? Uh, letter C naman Inflicting punishment. So punishment is again a no-no. It's a violation of the child protection policy. And then of course the mini casino, uh, no, the all process, you have to apply for a permit. Okay, so that is a no-no because -no it's, it's within the community. And uh, besides your primary job is to teach and not to have a mini casino. Although we are allowed to have businesses, but those businesses should not at all affect our job as teachers. Okay na, Abigail? That's why ang tamang sagot natin ay letter B, judicious disbursement. Dahil the letter B na judicious disbursement pertains to actually the use of your reason. Okay? So if you look at the here. Okay. If you look at the meaning of judicious according to the dictionary, it's having, showing, or done with good judgment or sense. Uh, synonymous words like it's legal and it's allowed. So that's why the correct answer is letter B, boy. Okay na, Abigail? Okay, I hope Abigail is listening and we are doing fine with our Facebook Live. Ako lang yata ang nakaka-experience na hindi mo siya nababasa lahat dahil na rin sa internet connection. Anyway, we are now on question number 23. Okay? Uh, sabi ni Faisal, mali ang letra ay uh, na-correct natin. Anyway, this is a practice test. Okay, 23, this is under social cultural dimension. Both Muslim and Christian value marriage, but the Muslim practices polygamous marriage, while the Christian practices monogamous marriage. The polygamous Muslim marriage should be viewed from the viewpoint of a Muslim and not from that of a Christian. What is this called? So, ano yung tawag dito? A, cultural relativism, letter B, inculturation, letter C, acculturation, or letter D, non-rationalism. Okay? So, I know ang tamang sagot. Okay? O, oh, si Wynne, sumagot siya. A cultural relativism is a principle that an individual's beliefs and activities should be understood by others in terms of that individual's own culture. Very good. Meron siyang definition na sinabi. Okay, let us see. If others was able to type in their answers and also agree that the correct answer is letter A. So if others answer letter A, let's go back to our discussion in sociology. Inculturation is learning culture from your own group. So this is the first 
transmission of culture in which you learn the practices of the community directly from you, the members of your family and the community. Uh, acculturation is learning some from another group, which means that as you move from your uh, locality, you will learn through the process of socialization and interaction with others some culture that you may also adopt okay, as part of your own. And then, of course, non-rationalism is uh, not related at all to social cultural dimension. So let us look at the meaning of cultural relativism. Uh, na type na ni Win ang meaning ng cultural relativism, but just to reiterate, uh, cultural relativism is the view that ethical and social standards reflect the cultural context from which they are derived. Sabihin, kung saan ang galing ang paniniwalang ito, ito din dapat ang magiging basihan sa ating pagtanaw ng klase ng kultura na mayroon tayo. So according to the ethical standards of the society within which the action occurs. So that's, that is why when we are uh, implementing a multicultural approach to teaching, we have to emphasize diversity of culture. So we need to be able to be inclusive in our delivery of our instruction in such a way that we need to respect the culture of our students and our learners. Okay, very good. Let us now move on to question number 24. O tama na si Faisal. Faisal, tama yung sagot mo, letter A. Okay, let's go to question number 24. This is another philosophy. O dito na naman sila magkakatalo. The inclusion of the study of Rizal and other national heroes in the school curriculum to inculcate the love of country is based on which philosophy? A, pragmatic, let it be existentialist, let it be idealist, let it be realist. You're welcome, Faisal. Okay, great question. <laughs> All right, so ano tamang sagot sa number 20 mo favorite ko lang ni Rico Rabi, ha? Okay, Raven, answers first, let it be idealist. Oh, I think marami sa inyo ang sumagot ng letter C. So I believe that this is something that you are used to you are familiar with the question and that you are 100% aware of this question. Uh, all right. Wow. Except na merong sumagot ng letter A. Pragmatic, again, is practical. So the focus of the question is why do we need to teach uh, Rizal and other national heroes uh, to inculcate love of country? So ang tamang sagot, ladies and gentlemen, wow, I am very impressed. This is the first philosophy questions that I think 90, more than 90% of you agree on the correct answer. Of course, this is what we call idealism or being idealist. So kapag kasi sinabi mong idealism, from the word ideal, ideal means standard. So we set the standards of love of country according to the belief of our national heroes. Kaya nga sila tinawag ni national heroes dahil ideally, sila yung nagpakita ng pagmamahal sa bayan sa pamamagitan ng pag laban sa mga baniyaga. So that's why we are getting to the correct answers, letter C, idealism. So idealists believe that the purpose of education is to the search for true ideas, self-realization, and character development according to, of course, models. Okay? So, you know, our code of ethics is based on the principle of idealism. So meron tayong mga expected sets of values and skills according to the expectations of society as teachers. So that's being idealistic or idealism, okay? Uh, opposite naman si realism, okay? Opposite expectations and reality, okay? So, of course, idealism is what you perceive, okay, as the standard or what is uh, what is what you call your standard. And then, of course, the realistic naman, ito yun naman yung opposite, okay? Uh, although this is what you perceive to be the best, and to be the standard, but you know, it does not apply in all situations. So in realism or in realistic perspective, there is what you call the use of science and mathematics, okay? Uh, that is why in math, you don't just provide the correct answer. You have to show how you uh, solve the problem, okay? Uh, sabi ni Goa, thank you po, ma'am, watching from South Cotabato. Hello from South Cotabato. Hindi pa ako nakapunta dyan. That's one of the provinces in Mindanao I haven't been to. I, you know, I've traveled most parts of Mindanao, except for South Cotabato. That will be one of my list. Sa so, yun sa mga nasa listahan ko. Oh, you, you tour me, Goa, ha? You tour mo ako sa South Cotabato soon. Okay. 
Let's continue on question number 25. This is another philosophy question. The teacher believes that it is better to use the old and traditional methods than to experiment with new techniques in classroom teaching. She is a slash and blank. Okay, this typographical error and lang yan, walang letter D. A naturalist, B existentialist, letter C progressivist, letter D essentialist. I think, aside from the question number 24, this is one of the, ano din, pinakamadali. Hello, Jonathan, from Bicol, Sorsogon. Hala, hindi pa pala ako nakapunta ng Sorsogon kahit sa Tugigaraw. I've been to Baguio once. Ay, ang dami ko nang pupuntahan. Of course, no, kasi social studies major ako, I have to promote the Philippines. O, di ba? O, oh, mabilis na sila sumagot. Letter D, essentialist, except meron sumagot ng letter A at letter C. A uh, naturalist is based on the nature of the child. So what we do is we adjust our teaching according to the nature of the child. So that's why, you know, when you teach kindergarten, there's so much emphasis and motivation. Ay, Joe Hazel from Pagadian. I've been, several, I've been to Pagadian, okay? The little Hong Kong of Mindanao. Oy, ano ang letter A naturalist according to the nature of the child? Kapag ka progressivist naman based on the needs and interests of the child. Sabi naman ni Entela Malu from Zamboanga del Sur. Hello, Zamboanga. Samar, hala. Uy, ang dami na nating mga kasama dito. From Albay. Ay, naku, gusto gusto ko makita ang Bayon Volcano. Okay. Oy, hindi naturalist nature yan, ha? So, ang tamang sagot dito ay essentialist. You already have the keywords, traditional and basic. So, kapag ka gusto ng old and traditional methods, ang tawag dyan ay essentialist. Hello, Maria Abigail from Zamboanga, Sibugan. Oy, Bohol! I love Bohol. Okay, hoy, Daisy, taga Bohol ka pala. Si Paisal ay from Zamboanga. Hello, I've been to Pagadian and then also to... Uh, Zambu Zam wala pa ako sa Zamboanga City pa hindi pa ako nakarating norte ang napuntahan ko Sorsogon ay bakit kayo nag-aano ng mga lugar ang, ang sarap kayo mag-travel ngayon pa naman ay merong from Samar meron akong tanong later to sa Samar Davao pa hello Davao and my love oy ang iligan sarap-sarap ng ano dyan at sana uh, pala pa from iligan okay Pangasinan hello Win you're from Pangasinan alam mo ang Pangasinan Ano nga ulit yung product sa Pangasinan na binigay sa akin last time na sarap na sarap ako. Uy, meron tayong from Tawi-Tawi. Ladies and gentlemen, from Tawi-Tawi, the farthest place. Of course, Rami, may favorite kami din. Maraming taga-sursugon, oh. Uy, DJ Agwa from CDO. Saan ka sa CDO? Uy, taga-iligan, magbigay kayo ng palapaha sa Buanga Norte. Ang daming mga crabs sa Buanga Bicol, Katanduanes. Uy, Diyos po, ang sarap ng pagkain dyan. Hi, nako. Ewan ko ba? Uy, tigilan nyo na yung mga pasasabi nyo ko sa kain ng galing. Ha, parang ano na, alam mo ba na sa Bisaya Katol, kumakatini yung pa ako kasi gusto ko nang mag-travel yung Mindoro. Hindi ko pa pala nakita yung Mindoro. Uy, nako, Northern Summer. Oh, sige na, the next time we will be allowed to travel. I have been, I've been to Cebu the whole time. Oh, the next time I will be traveling, I will tag all of you. Okay? So you should, uh, we should keep in touch with one another. Meron nga kaming from ano, Puerto Princesa, Bicol, Katanwanes. Uy, konti na lang. Uy, tigilan nyo na yung mga pagsasabi. May taga-tarlak pa. Ay, nako, Balamban. Uh, Festival of Region 2. Wow. Palawan, Calapan City Oriental, Mindoro. From Mindoro. Marami taga Mindoro. Taga Pagadian din. Taga saan ka sa Bukidon, Christine? From Cagayan, Silio, Palawan. Oy, dalhin mo kami sa Cagayan. Diyos ko, ang layan ng Cagayan Valley. Ang Cagayan kung saan ang galing ang pinakamahabang river. Oy, Capiz. I've been to Capiz. We have a review center. That is a Capiz. Sabi ni Julaag, kamang pwede mo kuyog. Oh! Kuyog, kanya-kanya tayo yung pamasahe. <laughs> Gusto ko na ako mag-travel. Kasi I've been traveling for... I've been traveling since 2014. Uh, you know, since I, I was given that chance to top the board, I've been traveling uh, from different parts of the country to do lectures in LET. And uh, this is the only time that I can travel because of the restrictions. Uy, pampang, ganan, dyan yung aking... Uh, ano, yung kamukha ko daw na si... Ano, si Gloria Makapagal, taga Pampanga yun. Hoy, DJ and Puerto. Hoy, taga Puerto, dahi ka DJ. O, oh, dahi po na, mako DJ. Hoy, taga Diri Ramandi, ay ka. We are from the city of the immortals. Charot lang. 
Oy, Bacolod, ang sarap ng pagkain din sa Bacolod. Oy, lang, sorry sa kami. Maganda ng boses mo. Ay, naku, salamat taga lumaban, no? Maganda yung boses ko pa nagsasalita, but uh, pag kumakanta, hindi. Kaya nga siguro umulan kasi kumanta, oy, taga Negros. Ay, tigilan nyo na yung mga ano, kasi hindi tayo tourism students, tayo ay mga let, o, oh, papasa tayo sa board exam. So, bago tayo mag-travel, ipasa muna natin ang September 26 sabi ni Christine, Ginoyoran, Valencia. I graduated from Central Mindanao University, Muswan, Bukid noon. Oy, Adrian, maganda yung Digos. We are planning to go back to Davao kasi I want to see the longest uh, ginagawang bridge niya sa Tagum. Oh, look at number 26 now, ladies and gentlemen. Hello from the land of the dragons. Uy, Alprims, anong land of the dragons ka dyan? Nasa ang lupalop ka ba ng Pilipinas ang land of the dragons ka dyan? Oh, hello. Ito na, Alprin. Sagutin mo itong number 26. <laughs> you type in your answers. 26. Who is a global teacher? A graduate of a degree in university, competent in the use of information, able to teach learners from diverse group, and knows how to speak different languages. Makatawa man sa tourism. Oo nga, kasi, ma'am, I still remember. Yes, I will be your next DepEd secretary. O, oh, diba? At least I know where you're from, so I can assign you to the place where you want to work. So yung mga, you know, if the time comes, I will become your deputy secretary, you tell me na, uh, Mom, I was one of your students in the online review with Rio, and I'm from Pangasinan. Can you please transfer me to Pangasinan? So you tell me. So sabi ni Joven, sagot na, oo. Oh, oh, sagot. Galit na si Joven. Oh, Joven, ano yung sagot mo? Oo nga pala, kasi I am a social studies major, so I need to be aware of the Philippine geography. Okay, that's why I have a map, but it's not here in the other room. Oh, who is a global teacher? The correct answer, of course, is back to Madididilit. Okay, here. The definition of global teacher is, of course, letter C, Charlie. Able to teach learners from diverse cultures dahil the definition of a global teacher is an instructor who teaches about the world, its history, and culture. So although ang letter D ay tungkol naman sa, uh, if you look at letter D, it says, knows how to speak different foreign languages. It may be true, but it's not necessary. Okay? So knows how to speak. It's not necessary. Although it will be an edge kapag ka you have other languages. Uh, kung letter B naman competent in the use of information and ICT technology, it may be true. But then again, we're talking about global teachers, so it is it follows that we also have knowledge in the ICT. So the correct answer here, the best answer is actually letter C, able to teach learners from diverse uh, groups and cultures. Okay, hello from Quezon City. Oi, si Al Al Paras pala from Quezon City, the city of stars. Oh, di ba? Alam ko Quezon City ay city of stars. Okay, sabi ni Jessica, this is a big help for me as I'm going to. Take my first, or right, congratulations, Jessica. That will be your first and last board examination. Sabi ni Robert, watching with Sami Ko and before you and Grace. Sabi ni Sir Robert. Okay, let's move on to question number 27. If the school acts as an agent of change, what should it do or what is expected to do? Letter A, implement a curriculum. Letter B, supplants the community culture. Letter C, enhances curriculum by localizing. And letter D, let teachers indigenize curriculum on their own. Okay, type in your answers now. Sabi ni John Mark, letter A. Okay, maganda ka naman yung letter A, perpetuate. Magandang pakinggan yung word na perpetuate. Bakit yung iba-iba yung inyong profile picture? Si Gazel ay letter C. Okay, including Jessica. Sabi ni Nelia, hello po. Good evening, watching from the province of Cebu. Hello, Cebu, Subo. Okay, my husband is from Cebu. And I, did, I worked in Cebu for seven years before I went back to Cagayan de Oro. I love Cebu. Simala is my favorite place. Doon ako nagsisimba. Uy, Jemeline, bakit letter X ang na-type mo? Wala naman tayong letter X na sagot. Ikaw talaga, Jemeline. Sabi ni Jinky, letter B, so plants community, the community culture with a new one. Ah, iba din si so plant. So plant, ibig sabihin ay tataniman mo ng bago. Okay, so yun ang ibig mong sabihin. Okay, while the rest of you answered letter C, meron mga iba na nag, nag, ibang sagot. Hello, no why from Lanao del Sur. I, I've been a lecturer in Marawi. Nung beses na ako nakaakit ng Marawi to do lecture. 
Sabi ni RB letter A, implement a curriculum that will perpetuate the entire culture. Ang ganda nga namang pakinggan, no? Asia's Latin City. Ikaw, Alfred, iba yung sinasabi mo. Kanina lang ako dragon. Ito naman, Latin City. Okay. Let's answer question number 27. Ang tanong ay tungkol sa being agent of change. Of course, the school is expected to become agent of change. If you go back to our discussion on social dimensions, there are, of course, uh, four theories explaining the relevance of the school. So, ang apat na teorya ay ang C2. So, C2 meaning that you have consensus and conflict, you have SF, structural functionalism, and then you have SI, symbolic interactionism. So, if you look at the, the definition of these theories, it has something to do with the purposes of the school. So, the question is, how do you become agent of change? Now, take note that being agent of change means to say that our role is to be able to adapt to changes. So no social change can take place without education. It is part of the process in which we change the outlook of the attitude and patterns of the relationship. Alam ko yung watching from one of the unique motor club in the Philippines, it's Ozamis or Pagadian. Charot. <laughs> I think it's Pagadian. Pagadian yung motor club nila nakahay. Oh, let's go back. Number 27, letter C, ang sagot. Okay? Indigenizing with the help of the community. Okay? So that is the correct answer. So number 28 now. Sabi niya, Alfred, tama po ulit ako. Ano yung mga Alfreds? My Fred classes are very useful. Oh, di ba? Okay, here, number 28. This is another law-related question, legal dimension. The Kindergarten Act states that the authority to regulate the organization operations and or implementation of the kindergarten program of both public and private schools shall be visited upon the blank. Is that A, DepEd, B, L, G, U, letter C, D, S, W, D, D, Barangay? What is the correct answer for number 28 according to the new kindergarten act? Giselle, Giselle answers first letter A, uh, Evior, letter A, Charlie is letter A, Gigi, letter C, Uh, Vina is letter C. Letter C according to Jessica. Uh, thank you. Habang tumatagal, tumataba na ako. <laughs> Ikaw talaga, Johnny, ha? Para, para ka lang umiinom ng, ano, ng alcohol, no? Yung makonti-konting inom, di ka pa natatamaan. <laughs> Hanging natamaan ka na. Okay ka lang, Johnny, ha? Okay, so you are divided between letter A and letter C between DepEd and DSWD. Now, historically speaking, ang mga unang kindergarten schools, I remember because, you know, uh, I've ahead for most of you. Mas matanda ako sa inyo. Our kindergarten program was actually managed by the DSWD in partnership with the LGU. Yun yung dati. Okay, yun yung dati. However, there's a new law about the Kindergarten Act. <clears throat> Ito ang Republic Act number 10157. I'm sorry. It's called Kindergarten Education Act. So ayon sa Kindergarten Education Act or Republic Act 10157, the duties, powers, and functions of the secretary shall be vested on her and shall be uh, shall be forwarded to the kindergarten division, which now be under the basic education department. So ibig sabihin, ang tamang sagot dito ay DepEd. Kasi that is why we now have the kindergarten program under the DepEd public schools. Okay? So meron na tayong kindergarten program based on this Kindergarten Education Act and also followed through by the RA 1053 which is the K-12 law, which is now a mandatory na dapat ay nasa, uh, dapat mag-kinder ang bata ng 5 years old. Okay? Mali-mali na type sabay kasi module ang mga junakis. Okay, Lance, you're a very responsible parent. Okay, maganda yan. At least you are multitasking. That's uh, that's a training ground for you to become a teacher. Okay, sabi ni Alvaro, yes, tama ulit ako. See, uh, see, there are instances when the first few items you are wrong and then later on you will gain momentum and then get the correct answer. So don't give up. Remember, there are 150 questions. So you start with the easy questions and then definitely you will get the correct answers. All right, we're down to two questions. This is question number 29. Question number 29, to enable learners to respond to the demands of the present world, what should schools do? A, teach application-based, creative, critical, and innovative, teach information and concepts, 
Letter C, offer a fixed curriculum. Letter D, prepare students for the present. All right, so try, try to analyze the question. Sabi ni Robert, pag secondary po bang exam is 150? Uh, yes, Robert, 150 items for gen ed, prof ed, and major. Sabi ni May Ann, review sa baygawa lessons. Padayon, yes. Padayon is continue. Laban, Japan. Okay. Wow, majority of you is very quick in answering, except there's one who answers letter D. Okay, somebody says letter D, prepare students for the present. Okay, but then again, the question is about what should schools do to respond to the demands of the present world? Wow, Ranil B. Lodimon. Hello, Ma'am Lesim are watching from Pagadian. Hello, sir. Hello, Ma'am or Sir. Ba ito? Hello, Ma'am or Sir. You know, I used the lecture also in Pagadian. So I hope to see you there when the restrictions are out and then we can now have time to travel. Sabi ni Jo, re review samtang na klase sa Wow, laban. Okay. I hope you are able to manage it kasi you are entertaining students in English and then you are studying and then you're listening to our ratio. 450 items sa lahat ng let, ma'am. Uh, yes, it is 450 items for secondary, but only 300 items for the elementary. Kasi gen ed and prof ed lang sila. Ang high school lang ang mayroong uh, majorship. Okay, so let us discuss. The correct answer, of course, is the longest, the most complete. The correct answer is letter A, teach application-based, creative, and innovative thinking because we're looking at uh, training our students to respond to the demands of the changing world. So, of course, meron tayong mga pagbabago. Everything happens or changes happens in a stand of second because of the advancement of technology. So, therefore, we need to prepare our students to respond to these changes. So they need to become effective members so that they can, they can become effective members of society. Yes, uh, Joven, 450. Uh, each subject will have 150 items. Yes, longest. So 150 for Gen Ed, 150 for Prof Ed, and then 150 for the Majorship. Ah, sabi ni Imelda, ma'am, na-remember kita nung sinabi mo mag and sa Hello, Imelda, yes. Soon, and hopefully, when you pray for that, it will happen very soon. I am aspiring to become your deputy secretary. So, yes, Ma'am Spectre Bia. Ah, yes, hello. I miss all of you from Pagadian. Okay, the little Hong Kong. I love Pagadian. I love their food, the accommodation, and the people. Mahilig talaga ako maglakbay. Sabi ni Lumaban, sana ganito ako magsagot sa exam lagi. Tama. Oy, huwag kang ganyan, Lumaban. Magiging tama talaga lahat ng sagot mo. Kasi remember, sumali ka na sa ating uh, final coaching. So, definitely, we are praying that all of the things that we have discussed will be the exact questions that will come out. So definitely, you will pass and top the board. Oh, Robert, need pa ba mag-apply for the secretary? No, you will be appointed. So you need to have the right. Uh, you need to have the right. You know, people to recommend you. Oh, sabi ni Gazelle, 120 ang math major po. Wow, so 120 pa pala, lang pala ang math. Ang social studies and the other uh, majors, I am aware that they there are around 150 items talaga, which are purely questions. Sabi ni Al, para sana po hindi na mapospon dito sa NCR. Uh, napospon niya ito sa Manila, di ba? Uy, Al, para, so wag kang maano dyan. Wag kang mag-discourage when it was postponed. It only gives you the idea that you are given uh, you are given time to prepare further and to make sure that you will top the board. So don't be discouraged. Bernadette, ilang oras po ba bawat subject? Jan, it is two hours. Prof, it is three hours. Majorship, three and a half. My final coaching po ba sa March? Definitely, yes. Okay, so we are down to the last question. Sabi ni Ryan, ilang oras po bawat set? Again, two hours for Gen Ed. Three hours for prof ed and three and a half hours, I think, for major. That's true. I'm speaking of my majorship. Okay, postpone sa NCR. Wag, ma, wag mag problema. It only means that you are given enough time to prepare. Okay, 30. Kasi sumagot pa si Sheila. In a classroom situation where students are discussing whether government efforts to establish peace and then that will be beneficial to the world, country or not, what is the most appropriate strategy? Is it a debate? Let it be visualization, see consensus, see conflict resolution. Okay. 
Alam mo, there are delays to things that we aspire for, but delays are only making us more prepared to accept bigger blessings. So, yun dapat. Uh, if I may say, I, you know, I finished my certificate of teaching in 2011. It took me three years after, uh, before I finally decided to take the board examinations. There are many obstacles that happened after 2011, but I believe and trust in the process of uh, right timing. So I think 2014 was the right time for me because I topped the board. So yun dapat ang we look forward to you. The right time will come to you. Okay, very good. Lahat kayo ay sumagot ng letter A. Of course, there's no other appropriate strategy when you talk about a topic in which you ask questions and then you are asked to organize arguments. The correct answer is letter A, debate or debate. All right, so we are done with the 30 item question. So your target score is 80%. Darwin, ma'am, natural po ba na walang maalala? It's normal, Darwin. Everybody experiences it. Even the, you know, yung mga matatalino talaga. Uh, however, it would be the first part only. Okay, merong mga first part ng board exam siguro dahil kinakabahan ka, nakakalimutan mo. But then again, that's why I said you have to take a brief. Okay, and then relax, compose yourself. Later on, you will be able to, you know, get the momentum of answering the questions. Just, you know, just relax. Okay, when I say relax, huwag masyadong tingnan ang board exam na parang end of your journey. It's the start of your journey to achieving your goal. So that should be your mindset. Okay, the target score that you should get of the 30 item uh, rationalization is 80%. So ano bang 80% ng 30? Dapat yun ang iyong magiging score. Okay, so also, okay, if you look at the target scores, meaning 80%, yung in yung prop ed, I more or less 40% of the social dimensions will be 40% of the prop ed questions. So that means that if you were able to get 80% of today, assuming that today is the board examination, then definitely you pass and probably top the board examination. Whatever is your score today, don't look at the scores. Okay. Uh, what I want you to do is that focus on the new things that you have acquired. Remember, it's a process of learning, relearning, and unlearning. So do not feel sad if you are not able to achieve the scores that you have desired. This is just a practice test. The actual scores that you need to ace will be on Sunday, okay? September 26, 2021. So yun dapat ang inyong nan. okay? September 26. Sabi ni Sheila, uh, thank you, Lord. Today's exam na. Do your best. Of course, you are expected to do your best. You're welcome, Lumaban. Thank you po, ma'am. God bless po at sa lahat ng sake. Okay, so that ends our session for today. Do not forget to start writing your first, your middle initial, and your last name, and tama LPT. That is how you claim your blessings. Okay, so make sure that you continuously aspire into achieving your dreams. A few more days. And then, of course, you will become LPT on Sunday. Okay, so I don't usually say good luck. Rather, I would say congratulations in advance. Okay, congratulations in advance for accomplishing your goal on Sunday to becoming licensed professional teachers. From the bottom of my heart, thank you for joining me and for staying with me despite the problems of the inter intermittent internet connection we have experienced. Thank you for choosing Rayo Top the Left to assist you in your online review program. And I will see all of you in the teaching profession and would love to see your names on the list of the top notchers and pastors of the licensure board examination. That ends our day today. Maraming salamat sa inyong lahat. God bless. Be safe. Continue. Okay, continue to uh, pray for one another for safety. Charlie, kailan po ba makafile ng di pa nakafile? I think they will open the filing next year, uh, Charlie. So please uh, stand by and check the PRC uh, page. Okay, so please continue to be safe, to pray for one another. Okay, be healthy, not only in body, in mind, but also in spirit. So congratulations to all of you. Maraming salamat sa pagsama sa akin. God bless to all of you. Mabuhay ang mga guro ng Pilipinas. And of course, congratulations, licensed professional teachers of the September 26, 2021 board examination. God bless everybody. Have a good night.